see Stacy. Stacy's a, a recent addition to our <coughs> Patreon, and she's quite active on there. Yeah, very I active, know. I've actually. seen. She's awesome. Yeah. What's up, Tom? Howdy, howdy, Good howdy. Good to see you. Hey, Stacy, Tom. <laughs> so far, we're gonna. Well, oh, wait, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Well, I didn't get it ready, but hang on. I got something. Oh Stacey. God. I got something. Wow. Stacy's a. Oh, I think. Hello? Oh my Lanza. <coughs> yeah, and I know, I've seen. Stacy is mom. What's up, Tom? Howdy, howdy, howdy. Good to see you. Hey, man, it's me, Kevin Smith. I'm Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Hi, I'm Kane Hodder. Hi, I'm Adrienne Barbeau. This is Fred the Hammer. Williamson. What's up? I'm Tiffany Shepis. Hey, this is Miko Hughes. Hi, this is John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. And I'm Bill Mosley. The Spooky Nooches, man. And you're watching The Horror Show. The Horror Show. The Horror Show. Hey, the man, it's horror me, Kevin show. Smith. I'm Elvira, Mistress show. of the Dark. The horror, I am. the horror Show. The Horror Show. The Horror Show. It's nothing but joy. <laughs> Welcome back, ghouls and girls, to the horror show. Slam a drink, grab a seat. It's news with booze. And this is the horror show news, and it is still with booze, but it's uh, it's Robert carrying the show booze wise. Just got um, a lot of water. And yeah, got some, yeah. Got some of that nice uh, blueberry vanilla meat going. Fuego and I are taking a tiny bit of a break uh, water, from the booze. Cold so, water. Um, Robert's going to be the booze part of today's equation, but we have, as you can see, lots of stories to discuss today, you guys. So we are going to jump right into it with everyone that is here uh, currently so mm -hmm. um, let's get into it right. with story number one i think this was probably the biggest agreed drop recently and with the performance of the box office i can't say that it is any surprise whatsoever mm -hmm. because the wait now let's again i use these as podcasts as well so the story number one is that paramount and spyglass yeah have officially ordered Scream 6, hot on the heels of the release of Scream 5, mm -hmm. or the Scream. Yeah, 2020, whatever. Five Cream, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I prefer Screams. Yeah. But, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, no, uh, no specifics as to which of uh, legacy characters may be returning or of the new crew that they brought around for this 2022 installment, but... Yeah, with the amount of money that it made, it made a lot more than Scream 4. That was why we didn't get Did Scream. Really? Yeah, significantly more than Scream 5 and 6. And, and there was wasn't just... a pandemic during Scream 4. <laughs> exactly. Wow. So, so that just showed that, that you know, the, the industry was a little bit tired of the franchise at that particular point because Kevin Williamson <laughs> Dude, didn't have <laughs> Exactly. We're in a desert, man. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Kevin Williamson in a recent uh, podcast I was listening to discussed that he had, like, story outlines for Scream 5 and 6 had Scream 4 performed significantly better than it did. Unfortunately, it did not, and so that's why Radio, uh, Radio Silence, right? Is that the name of those two guys who did Ready or Not? So, um, yeah, man, um, I can't say that I'm surprised about the Scream 6 and all the speculation about uh, who could be returning from the newbies, as I was saying. Uh, we know that at least a couple legacy characters could potentially come back without spoiling anybody who 
maybe couldn't have made it to the previous film. It's been out for a few weeks now, guys. But yeah, I still haven't gotten through it yet. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I don't give a shit. I already know spoiler <laughs> stuff and everything like that. Yeah, it's prevalent, right, prevalent. Okay. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, no shocker here. I, I'm very much hoping that a character who uh, there was a little Easter egg saying that uh, she survived Scream 4 could potentially make it into this. That's mm -hmm. probably my, my number one maybe if they could swing it and figure it out. But Cecil, what do you think about this? I'm just sick of everyone talking about bring back Matthew Lillard's character. Like, <laughs> if they're going to do it, fine. But at this point, it feels like it would be to cater to all the fucking people out there talking. Preach the choir. Um, instead of just having it happen organically. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm... I, I like Scream 5 better than, you know, Scream... Four for sure, Ooh, and better no, than no. better than Scream Three. I don't understand what everyone loves Scream Four so much. Like, Love it. there's nothing that great about that movie. Why? Did, it's it it had the exact same problem as this one did, as far as the killers not matching the physicality needed in order to perform everything that happened in the films, and there was no stakes in Four, especially when you compare it to Five. So I just don't understand why everyone has so much love for Four. I don't get it. Why, Robert? I don't know. I've watched it one time and I haven't gone back to it. I only mm. watched it once in the theater. Honestly, and I went. To, I went back to it ahead of this one, oh, and okay. I still felt underwhelmed. Yeah. And I had never the, the watched only, it. In the between. only scene that still ever sticks with me is um, uh, the, uh, the the electric shock things up against the head. At the end. Oh. That was the only thing that really stuck out to me that still remember like still clicks in my head and everything. And that's that not even really how that works, but you know well, yeah, it, it would be one quick shot. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but that, again, that's so you how, how memorable even. At least was. the kills in five were a lot more brutal and stuff too. So See, like, that's I what just, I, there that's was a lot of better hearing. things about What is that sound? Mm. I, I disagree 100% with some both of you guys, and I am not alone. I am not the alone. I am, no, dude, the, where the girl gets gutted and you find the aftermath of her in the bedroom early in the movie in Scream 4, that's pretty gnarly, man. And honestly, Scream 5 for me was just doing a lot of the things that they, you know, trying to remake it and videotape and all that yeah. shit. Yeah, Scream 4 did it already and did it better in my estimation. I am not alone on an island in my affinity for Scream 4. We talked a lot about it in our review of Scream 2022. So, Admonish. Yes. True. Yeah, Admonish. For, more, for more Scream <laughs> discussion, go check out our... Did we do a separate spoiler or did, was we, it all we, in one? We just did spoilers at the end. Oh, it, was one, a, okay. it was a very long yeah, discussion. So long discussion. Scream. Yeah, that's right. It was almost an hour, if yeah. I recall. Yeah, but Scream right. 6, it's happening. And uh, will we get the Hayden... Corey Novak fell asleep in a the theater during the time. Damn. Um, all right, so let's let's shout out some of the people real quick that have yes. filtered in. Emily Edlin says, "Hi guys, sorry I'm a little late. Don't worry about it. We're still on store number yeah, one. Just I like the new. I didn't like the new scream, but I appreciate it. Fair enough. I mean, that's kind of how I feel about four. I didn't like it, but I appreciate it well enough, I suppose. Amen, Stacy. Bring back um, Kirby. That's what I want. All right. <laughs> Get rid of this bum thing again. Um, all Gotta right. love the corn. Yeah, qualities. Corey Novak's here. Joshua Serentin is here. Hi, Tina, hello there. And yes, you said hi to Jake earlier, as long along with Tom. So let's uh, let's move along here. Move along, sir. Um, let's go to store number two. God, I'm so sick of these these movies. So really, I'm so so we tired of the final destination. I don't care, and that's fine. That and that is fine. No one's forcing you to it's see it. It's the same thing with the Saw movies. Just stop making them. They're still making money. Fuck, man. I understand that, but god damn. <laughs> um, I'm excited about this. I love John Watts as a creator. Yeah. He he not only did the Spider-Man movies, he also did Clown. Yep. And so you yeah, know, Watts produced. I, I, oh, I didn't watch that one. Oh, that's a great clown. Is that great. is a yeah. great monster okay. movie. Okay. Yeah. It really is. I, I that that was one of those like I remember seeing it and just kind of kept passing through it just because. That's one you can throw on one of your top monster lists. Really? Because it's it really legitimately is a monster movie at the end of the day. Yeah, right. and it's very distinctive in its story with how yeah. they approach what sex gander does. one of these days. Yeah. Oh, it's damn good. I've been meaning to get the Blu-ray out of it. No. I don't know if it's readily. There's a few movies. <laughs> I've noticed there's actually quite a few movies that have come out in like the last five years that we've watched but have never gotten a Blu-ray release, mm. and it's frustrating. You talked to Monty about this. Yeah, time. like there's there's a number of them. One thing I am, especially on the festivals. One right? Blu-ray yeah. uh, thing I am excited. Still for. haven't gotten that fucking MSTK or what, what was it? Oh, oh, uh, uh, my soul to keep. 
Remember that one was great. That's oh, that still was not gotten a Blu-ray. I don't even think that ever got like a VOD release or anything. They well, it's got a VOD it. release, oh, but oh, okay. um, I, it's never I don't think it's still available. I don't know. Mm. My Soul to Keep or Mr. Science? My Soul to Keep. No, my Soul oh, to Keep. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. It, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, a film we saw at oh, okay, okay. International yeah. Horror Sci-Fi Film. That's how I remember it, honestly. It's because it's 3K without the 3. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, so... Final Destination, done by the guy that's that's just not. It's he's done one of the top three Marvel movies uh, now at this point. Eddie's in the background. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, sorry, he isn't headphones, but yeah, we'll. we'll no, that yeah, I, I, that's what I need you guys to tell me for. So, yeah. all right, let me, let me, let me get that lowered here. I know moment to. Oh, jeez, that is loud. Oh my god. Good lord. Ah. Holy shit! Sorry, guys. Yep, I'm Poor glad someone man. said something. <laughs> <laughs> Glad someone said something. Um, all right, so that should be a lot better. Um, but no, like like the final destinations, they're fun for what they are. It's just I don't know. They just got to the point where it was just almost too over the top on just some on some of the, the kills and scenarios. I just got bored with it really quickly. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and that's that was my problem with the soft franchise, and why I've still yet to even watch Spider. But this is why I'm okay with Final Destination being every five years or something like that. You know what I mean? It doesn't need to be yearly, like Saw and Paranormal Activity. Well, thank doing. God not. But mm. but but I mean, I it's still one of the most entertaining. There's still so many movies that are just Final Destination with a different skin. True. You know what I mean? I and and every time I enjoy <laughs> them, and every time I'm like, this is like Final Destination, and I enjoyed it. Because I just, I like, it's death as like an ever-present thing that can mm -hmm. happen at any time is, is a legitimately terrifying no, idea. Absolutely. Just like Jaws is, just yeah. like Freddy is. Yeah. The, the off, <clears throat> like, it's... The it's, concept of... The concept of death and, and not having a physical presence and still being as terrifying yeah, as it is. It's ever it's looming, really cool. it's always there. And yeah, yeah. yeah that, that is definitely um, one thing that I like that they did with the, the, the franchise and everything. It's keeping with that. It's like you're never going to escape death. Death is always going to be there around the corner no matter what you do. Yeah. But it just got, God damn, this, some of these scenarios just got so over the top. Yeah. I was all for it, man. <laughs> like, this series is a guilty fucking pleasure for me, 100%. I don't think any of them were good after two. But nonetheless, I saw every single one in theaters. The ending of the most recent and fifth entry was exceptional. The way that it tied in with the I first think, film. I, think I, I, think I the thought last that was one, terrific. The last one the I think I watched was, was, was the NASCAR one. Is that four? Um, Three or four? Was the NASCAR three one? Three was the roller coaster. Okay. I think four was the racetrack it was a racetrack was either four or five shit man i was can't it? remember i don't know like, this, this is well, one of my favorite memes oh yeah absolutely and i was driving i was driving to work right. the other day past one of those i'm like yeah, yeah Ch so childhood trauma is just oh, created sorry. by movies emotional damage yeah. straight up like, for a lot of people Oh, for the second, dude, dude, the beginning of the second film with the logs and everything. Oh, absolutely, and, like, yeah. Pile up on the highway. That's that's literally what I'm pulling up here nice, for nice. everyone. So, yeah. I almost had a scenario like that happen. So this right here, guys. Concert. This is a fantastic meme. Everyone on the left has seen Final Destination. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I, I love that. I mean, it's probably the best opening of all. Of them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I loved the roller coaster one though. That was three. Gotta be honest. I, I thought think the that roller was a, coaster. That was de no. There was Elizabeth definitely a nerve. Yeah, it was yeah. definitely a nerve wracking one because again, it's like all the times I've gone on roller coasters, and that's the one fear that we all have, especially when you get those the rickety ones and everything. I remember going yeah. on one roller coaster. The damn thing was made of wood. <laughs> All right, that was, was made of dude. That was, that was the most nerve wracking roller coaster I've ever been on. That thing was creaking and cracking. Hell no, screw that. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, it's been long enough where I think yeah, this will probably do well. It's not going to be in theaters though. Just to keep in mind, this is similar to what they did with that new Paranormal Activity film. It's going to be going directly to a streamer, so it's going to be residing on HBO Max exclusively. So okay. That's yep. fine for me. I, yeah, same, I, I love same. HBO, honestly. Amen. I'm, I'm, I've been hey, digging. Speaking of HBO, they have, have you started uh, Raised by Wolves yet? I was waiting until it's all finished. And I'm yeah, okay, because I know they yeah, dropped like the first two or three episodes and everything. Yeah. I haven't yeah, started Yeah, they dropped it the first yet. two. I, I just finished Station Eleven, which was the one with uh, Mackenzie Davis. I want to oh, say. Okay, okay. Sci-fi, a little bit of horror in there. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, bring on more Final Destination, man. I'm, I'm all about it. Why the hell not? All right, so moving on to story number three. That's going to bring us to Ooh, Meg to the Trench. Yes. Has officially begun filming with Jason Statham reprising his role as nice. Jonas Taylor. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, you read you read the books on this, correct? I have read all of them. Yes, okay. and, and I read the first book. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I See, I haven't. I hadn't read any book. of the books and everything. And I they're had, worth while. They're quick summer reads. That, that's oh, yeah. what I heard and everything. But I really enjoyed the movie of this. Yeah. The, so, I mean, the book's even better. For I, sure. I, well, I'm, the book, the book is yeah. nine out of ten times always going to be better. So, so this one is interesting because they did something in in the first one that really should have been reserved for the second one. There's a undersea base. Mm -hmm. In the first one, and that really is only introduced in the second movie or the second book. Oh, okay, okay. And that base is owned by a corporate, a, you know, billionaire mm -hmm. who ends up kind of, you know, being the villain of the story. Um, but what they also introduce is the Chronosaurus. Um, so since the Meg is alive, you find out that also these giant prehistoric alligator creatures are also in existence, oh, okay. but they're staying at the super low depth, too. Mm. Um, and I'll pull up a picture of what a Chronosaurus is. So do we have big I remember, creature fights in I would the hope book? so. Like, oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. I remember, well, I remember it's, seeing But not as cover. many as you'd think, but, but this is what breaks open the gate in the Meg books to where it turns out that... Um, well, kind of like a Mosasaurus. Oh, yeah, 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 it's, it's a <clears> version <throat> of a Mosasaurus. Um, right there but yeah it, it starts the whole idea that there are basically all the prehistoric water creatures still exist but they're in a sub I don't know what it's technically called it's like essentially it's like a sub sub sea floor there's another ocean below the ocean's floor mm -hmm. um, and that <laughs> ocean still houses many of the of the prehistoric sea creatures out there and as the books go on you find out that like there's also a dude by like the fourth book there's a dude that's the interesting thing this is the first book or the first book is what you saw in the movie basically mm -hmm. the second book is is largely um terry uh, jonas's wife play you know who's not they just met in the first movie they're now married in the second one okay. um or or at least together and she's trapped below and he has to get down to her hmm. um and meanwhile angel is now um, captured in Masao's lagoon, where he was supposed to keep the whales, but they capture the Meg. Like, you didn't see it um, in the movie, but you saw that one of the Megs, or there was a Meg baby that escaped the big one as it was getting eaten by all the other fish. Uh, what happens is they capture that Meg baby and put it in the lagoon or the big area, and they have shows where they're feeding oh, other damn. things to the Meg, and it's like SeaWorld, but with the awesome. Meg. Awesome. So that's, <laughs> that's like, cool. Yeah, that's the A it. story of the book. The B story is all the stuff below the sea okay. with, with Jonas's wife and everything, and then they, they kind of collide where they end up releasing Angel to chase Jonas down to fight off the Chronosaurs to get Terry back up to the surface. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be neat. To it's see how they're they very do that. much big summer blockbuster books, yeah. so it makes sense that they're doing this and doing it that way where they have it in a tank. People are gonna love that. That's one of it, that's one of my favorite scenes from Jurassic World. Right, was mm -hmm. when they fed the great white to the Mosasaur. Yeah. Think if you can spend a good chunk of movie uh -huh. with that thing, and think of the fact that one of the scenes is. There's, you know, little kids that break in at the wrong time and get down to, like, you know, there's a subsurface window, mm -hmm. and they start banging on it, and the thing starts ramming it, and it doesn't end well for one of the boys. Let's Good. just say that. Good, yeah. you I'm dumbass. killing kids. Exactly. Yes, we yeah. get it. You, you, so that's the second play book. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. If they mm. follow the book format, that's the second book. The third book is where there's basically a, a, uh, stair, a, a stunt daredevil tv show that you know decide to film out in the feeding grounds of the newly released meg sharks hmm. and uh it's them filming a reality show trying to you know tempt fate and it doesn't yeah, end well yeah. for a lot of people and then for the fourth one is hell's aquarium where there's a billionaire from dubai that wants to build an aquarium and fill it with all of these prehistoric creatures that they've discovered still exist. Yeah. Mm. So it's okay. really fucking cool. He's a Hammond, you know, that yeah, that yeah, that basically John Hammond. Hammond. Yeah. yeah. So so either way, there's the, a lot of cool the, stuff that can come if they follow the story beats and don't fuck it up too much like they did the first one. Mm -hmm. Fair well, enough. Well, See, again, I didn't, I didn't read the first book, so I don't know how much exactly they changed. The book is just—it like it, it was just de de defanged and yeah, you know, sort of. The movie was like defanged. Yeah, yeah, very much so. And I, I was even reading that Statham said that. He originally signed on 
to the Eli Roth version. Yeah, when it was going to be like R rated and significantly oh, yeah. more violent and everything. Uh, John Turtletop did the first one, which I, I'll admit, I that's the Chronosaurus guys. Yeah, I thought aspects of the first Meg film were okay, but I was ultimately disappointed having just read the original book, and so I was a little hard on some of the characters and, and whatnot. But I'm I'm much more intrigued with this <laughs> because of the presence of Ben Wheatley directing it. And ben Wheatley has done. Uh, he did what Kill List. He did Rebecca. He did um, In the Earth, which I liked. I believe he's a much more esteemed horror director in comparison to Turtle Top. He did like National Treasure and stuff like that. So uh, I, I think you have a better director at the helm in this particular case, and one that has done more genre work. Wait, who did you say it was? Sorry, it's, uh, it's, it's Ben Wheatley. That's oh, Ben Wheatley. Movie. Okay. Yeah, High Rise, Rebecca, In dick. the Earth, Kill List. <laughs> yeah, like, he has a good resume, man. So. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's say uh, thank you, Doctor Death, for the for the two dollar uh, Canadian super chat. Uh, Patrick Wilson returns to star and direct in Insidious Five. Yeah, I didn't choose that story for some reason. Yeah, kind of but forgot about it because we knew it was happening, right? We we knew it was happening. We just didn't know like any filming dates or any specifics yeah. as far as who would be directing. We knew James Wan was not going to be returning to direct. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's also a fake trailer floating around, a fan made that like, one's been trailer. around for months. Yeah, yeah, point, and so yeah. that's where. Like, I, I think they finally addressed that and why it's not a major story because of the fact that they're like, no, aside from Patrick Wilson directing it, we really don't know much else. And they also confirmed that that trailer floating around is not real. So, yeah. Um, Julian, yeah Julian Ibarra is here. Or Ibarra, sorry, I'm not sure if I'm mispronouncing that. Hmm. Um, good good to see you. Ben Grimm, what's going on? Awesome. Uh, when Meg goes to SeaWorld, but when Jaws goes to SeaWorld, not so much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, Jaws it's going to be fun. Yeah. It's going to be a beefed up version 3. of Jaws 3. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nico Christ, hello. Five uh, will be out uh, about the sun in college now, I believe. Yep. Uh, well, no, five's out. Um, they're, they're, so what happened was between Hell's Aquarium and the next and Meg 5, he did The Lock, which was about the Loch Ness Monster actually existing. And there's a Scottish Jonas Taylor. And then the next Meg book actually no, brought them together. I think they're talking about 5. Oh, Insidious 5? Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, fair enough. <laughs> Insidious 5 will be about the sun in college and everything. Well, he's not. it's not wrong, because his <laughs> main 5 is about the oh, sun. Oh, shit, okay. Also, oh, fair so enough. That's why I was confused. Uh, okay. That's uh, why I was no, I definitely, yeah. Necro, I definitely agree. Um, I, I enjoyed oh, the... Oh, Necro uh, Christ. I said Necro Christ. <laughs> Necro Christ. Necro Christ. Um, yeah, um, I definitely enjoyed the uh, Insidious franchise as well. So far, like, it hasn't been really one that... Skeleton Key was pretty stupid. Yeah, I was, was it? Yeah. That one. Okay. Yeah, See, I didn't get into that one yet. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, but, two, but between, two between two that awesome, and the, between but five that are and supposed the Conjuring to return series, to one and two family. So that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, be between the, the city, Insidious and Conjuring movies, I'm I'm all about those ones. Yeah. Especially absolutely. the Conjuring movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I agree. Give me. Give well, me. the third Conjuring kind of sucks too. Have you not watched that one yet? I have that. Uh, that one. Which one? Just came out the last year. The Devil made me. Devil made me do it. No, that one. I did actually like that. Did you really? Yeah, because we did the review and everything on it. I was, I think, the only one. Oh, yeah, because me, yeah, yeah, me and Marsha and you were like, yeah, we yeah. All, I no, like, I actually, yeah, I had, I enjoyed that and everything. Okay, um, fair enough. But yeah, no, give me anything. Ed and the Rain Warren. <laughs> yeah, I like them. Yeah, so. I mean, I don't know them personally, obviously, but I like their stories. <laughs> I like the stories that. Come well, from they've their both stuff. passed on now. Okay. Have good. they both passed on? Did, did she? Yeah. Die no, uh, I believe. I believe. Uh, 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 yeah, I believe they both passed away. All right. Well, let's move on to story number four. Let's I know Ed a lot passed away. Ago. Oh yeah, yeah. He's ago. been gone for a while. Yeah. yeah. She, when they first started making these Conjuring films, she was on. Yeah, I like think she passed away maybe yeah, I think two, yeah. maybe three years ago. Mm -hmm. All right, so story number four. The filmmaker behind Pig, the Nicolas Cage movie from last year, is set to direct a spin-off of A Quiet Place. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know his name. Fuego, do you have his name right there? I'm trying to pull it up right now, but I was... Dude, Pig was legitimately one of the best things I saw last year. It's not in I just watched it like a couple days ago. Yeah. It was pretty good. It, it just surprised me in what they did with it more yeah. so than anything else. And it was very nicely shot, so... And lots of... Uh, and well, Lots of instances in like the northwest, like what the, the Washington or Oregon sort of area, when they're like out in the woods and mm -hmm. when he's being the hermit and stuff. And since uh, Quiet Place is all about being in those more rural areas and stuff, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, although I do know that they just recently delayed this um, by about six or eight months. I'm just trying to pull up the story, but I mean, this is a very capable director. I know there is still, aside from this spinoff, going to be a third uh, entry in the series with them. Okay. Blunt returning, so oh, this really? is just okay. aside. Wow side story sort of situation but this is coming out before the the next sequel okay. so to See, speak like this is like again like i enjoyed the quiet place stuff but hey, 
it's it's nice to have you can get a spinoff to basically uh, like a different group of people or a different faction and everything. But how how much stuff can you really kind of keep doing? Oh, there's so it? many it's a stories rich world, to tell. In you that think? Story. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely, dude. You it, it, here's the thing: how many different stories about different kind of people? do we see on a regular basis you can literally do still any kind of story just set it in a world where you can't talk true you could legitimately true. do like a slapstick comedy in that world if you really want like you could do anything in that world dude imagine Abbott and Costello meet meet the quiet place monster yeah like dude, <laughs> there's, so there's great. funny stuff that I, I was just watching the Boris Karloff nice up to date the other day <laughs> so that's a, that one Abbott and Costello res- some of you guys that one at least resonates is. with me yeah. if you don't are you know, over 40 or 50 you're good. No, no, I'm not even close to 40 or 50. Well, that's, no. that's why it's a joke. That's everyone's me. homework. If you don't know who Evan and Costello is, you don't go watch to, go okay. watch them. You that's shut okay. your poor mouth. That's okay. They're they're basically like the Stooges, but for like the the Universal Monsters. Yeah, you don't need to watch yeah. the Stooges. Either. Don't listen to this yeah. mook. <laughs> so yeah, I am stoked about this because the, just the, the capabilities from a stylistic standpoint from the DD did pig. No, but, Stacey I mean, Costello can't be quiet. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, we still need a good script, and I hope that they can maintain that. I, I didn't like a Quiet Place too as much as the first one. I think you and I were both in that. Hmm. In that frame of thinking. So, what what does Dark Light have to say there? Dark we Light sent a five dollar super chat. Thank you very much, Dark Light. Imagine if Meg Two is rated R and they go for a more serious Jaws approach. Their be... sharks look good in Meg Part One, unlike most shark films. I agree, but here's the problem: they made a shit ton of money Not with that happen. first movie, Not gonna and happen. they made a shit ton of money because all ages basically could go see it. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, with parental guidance. <clears throat> yeah, when Eli Roth was at the helm, as we were mentioning, it was supposed to be. Very violent, R-rated, yeah, bloody. That's I what mean. we wanted. Yeah. Too. Um, and you know, honestly, it's something I, I still wish that someone could do a R-rated version of a giant sea monster movie because that's really what it deserves, you know. Uh, but nonetheless, yeah. Deep Rising, go watch that. Uh, so <laughs> yes, that that would be cool. But <laughs> I'll get back. I'll get back on to In a perfect uh, that. world. Uh, Nec- uh, Necrochrist, sorry, says, uh, I almost fucked it up again. <laughs> I like The Conjuring 2 up until the showdown with Volok at the end. Uh, it felt too action superhero-like. Um, still thought a lot of the elements were cool and well done. Mm-hmm. I don't, I mean... Conjuring 2's my favorite. Just when, it's not really <clears throat> a battle, it's just the words and... Like an exorcism kind yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. Honestly, the worst of it was the, a lot the, of that the, in, the, in the past nun movie. movie. Yeah, like, the, the nun, nun movie, movie was terrible. Was and they I had stole fun with how stupid the climax. No, I couldn't even know. From uh, Demon Frenchie Knight. man, I mean, the tone with that was deliberately not in the same vein as the rest of all of those tie-in films. They all take themselves very seriously. <laughs> the nun, for whatever reason, did not. Father. So, yeah. Um, Let's see. Uh, yeah, Patrick Wilson is directing Insidious 5. Uh, it's his feature film directing debut. That's cool. He's been in enough of scary movies where he should know his way around how to do so. a, a, you know, a movie like that. Yeah. I've always really Plus, he's, him, he's really I, good. I mean, yeah. he's fun. he was even fun to watch in Moonfall. Moonfall. Yeah. yeah, even though Moonfall even though was, was really very shit, fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, they should do an R-rated version of, uh, for video release. I, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't spend the money on the effects if it's not going to be released to mm-hmm. a wide audience. Because yeah. those effects are expensive. Yeah. Um, so, because I mean, back in the day, remember how they would release the PG thirteen, and then they would release on home release the version you couldn't see yeah. in theaters. It still the wasn't director's no, cut. No. It just yeah. rare. Well, I mean, you can't. Those it, are the ones that were actually shot Doctor for Sleep. R, but then the studio yeah, changed. They yeah, they trimmed it down. That's a different sort of situation. That's yeah. studio pressure in post, as opposed to you yeah. know initially. If they look at it and like we're not going to be able to sell this unless we can put it to a PG-13 audience, so you gotta like, sniff that shit. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, God, God forbid, like, what happened with Wes Craven and reshooting all of those scenes with different actors, and they made it seem like it was gonna be that cut, yeah. and then they had to go clarify for everybody. Yeah, well, dude, this like, we tried. Dude, that's the same thing yeah. with what the studio did with uh, Cursed. That's what that's I was what we Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, so, okay, yeah. 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 All right, so let's move on to the next. That was, that was a little couple on steps, to the couple next steps yeah. behind on, on that one. <laughs> one. On to the next. So one. next is Legendary's MonsterVerse is going to continue post Kong versus Godzilla, <clears throat> and it is going to be continued as an Apple Plus TV show. Interesting that destination. Will feature Godzilla. Fuck, yeah, I know. I don't have Apple Plus God yet. Damn it! I think you guys can bite on mine. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, because, yeah, I because will. both of us have it. I look, dude. Apple TV four ninety nine. Well, that's it. 
It's only four ninety nine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and that's another paid. streaming and service they gotta right pay for. Um, All of their stuff is exceptional, though, man. Yeah, I need Everything. to watch. Well, I, I know, still need to finish Yellow Jackets. Show. I don't care about the cult show. Yeah. Well, it doesn't initially start as a cult show. It just veers into that territory. But, um, but anyway, story. the MonsterVerse. I'm excited because that means now we can see expansion of a lot of the monsters we saw in. King of the Monsters, right? I'm just surprised that, that it's got not short be, Yeah, I'm just surprised it's not going to be on Peacock because Universal, because yeah. Peacock is where the Universal stuff resides, you know. But well, I guess that's why it I is said legendaries. Legendaries, so, yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, they're not, I'm, they're not Universal technically, but yeah, but they work in conjunction like mm -hmm. pretty much all the time mm -hmm. on this stuff. So, but yeah, small screen, Apple TV Plus. I mean, they don't skimp. As I, when we were doing our favorite TV of the year last week, I mean, Invasion looked awesome. Lisey's story. So many, uh, so many things that they have done, they didn't skimp any expense, and I would hope they would continue that. The trend only here. issue I gotta say though is those are really, if anything is made for the big screen, yeah, it's those kinds of movies. You know yeah, what I mean? I so yep. uh, it is kind of unfortunate that we won't be able to experience that unless you like rent out a theater and mm -hmm. when the season's done, just buy a projector, just binge it. Yeah, well, be still, nice but then you gotta I have know. a free wall and you gotta have a good sound system to make it worth it. Yeah, because one of the only uh, streamers who does that sort of thing where they'll show stuff in theaters is uh, Amazon Prime. They did it with the boys. They did it with Real yeah. Time. They did. Yeah. I'm sure they'll do it with that Lord of the Rings series they're spending so yeah. much goddamn money on. That there's so. gonna be nudity in. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Take, they taking a, a cue from call. Game of Thrones. Yeah, that's, so. yeah, I think that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make the Lord of the Rings universe Game of Thrones. Wasn't oh, wow. Tolkien a Christian too? So that's a yeah, little, it's a little, little weird. Yeah. I don't know how. I, maybe, I don't know. Man, I don't know how. I feel him about and that C.S. Lewis. Yeah, I don't, but yeah. it's a thing. They we they put out a legitimate casting. Well, call. Yeah, well, apparently, well, if they're if they're going or they have basically going this far, then the Tolkien estate has signed off on it. Yeah, well, and it but takes still, place well before any yeah. of the books and everything. But it's still so. his his the utilization of his characters mm -hmm. in the in the universe. So technically, the the estate would have to kind of sign off the rights. To I would do imagine that. they would have to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they see the money that uh, Witcher and you know Game of Thrones yeah. and all these contemporaries that are very violent and what up, sex. Jared? So mm -hmm. good to see yeah. you, man. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a while. I hope you've been doing okay. Um, so, all right, let's go to the next story. I'm which just is, trying. To, yeah, sorry, oh. I was just trying to double check to see if there was any other information in the story saying more big screen stuff. But yeah, no word no. yet mm -hmm. on anything else. So, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of a bummer if that was the case. So the next story is, of course, there is now a Goosebumps live action TV show reboot coming to yep. Disney yep. Plus. Oops, the graphic was fucked up on that one uh, uh, let me grab the graphic I'll load it you guys got it. the idea yeah no I'm actually I'm pretty excited about this just because now they're gonna have a, a bigger budget the the effects are gonna be hopefully a lot better yeah, there graphic. Go. There, yeah, you go. there we go. There we go. Um, I have to give a shout out to to Brandon real quick too from Jerks Productions he just jumped on yeah, uh, hi. and thank you Ben Grimm <laughs> But um, how are those yeah. uh, Vice uh, films treating you, Ben Grimm? I was sent, he's watching these. Oh yeah, the Vice Academy. The, the, the yeah, I know. He, he's up on. I, like, I think he's up to like Vice Academy five, five or, or six, six now. Yeah, I've been the, reading his little blurbs on Instagram. It's, it's about funny. It. It's cracked me up. Um. So yeah, I I the Goosebumps movies were okay, but they were really first one way better. Than silly. The so <laughs> here's here's the, here's the issue I have with this though. You see the popularity of anthological storytelling at this point. Currently, for sure. Why not just do an <laughs> anthology series making one book an episode, a book an episode, a book an episode? But no, apparently they're doing all of the things together like they did in the movie, but on an episode basis. That's so, where I completely disagree with this, too, because of yeah. the fact that <clears throat> like, in the 90s on Fox Kids, that's how they handled it. Yeah. One episode was one book. Yeah. There were some very good ones, like Piano Lessons Can Be Murder, Say mm -hmm. Cheese and Die, Welcome to Werewolf the Dead House. Werewolf Fear Swamp. No. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just, like, I'm I actually one of the few <laughs> from our crew that watched, uh, it was called Just Beyond. Was oh, you did watch it? It was good. Uh, was it? It was really good, actually. Yeah. For kids' horror, it was really good. And that's based on R.L. Stein comics, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Okay. And so I was hoping they were going to take that sort of route, and they're not. They're doing, and even the director of the first movie is directing the pilot of the show. So they're not, Jeez. they're not veering away really. It's probably going to be lots of sloppy. 
because I know he sells. And so does that mean Arnold Stein's going to be in the thing again? Like, well, I would hope not. That uh, that dude, a couple like, that, yeah, that, that that is just a little too yeah. much for me. Yeah. yeah, because honestly, like this would have been cool. Like, yeah, it's, it's a Disney Plus thing, but if you go, if you take it a little bit more of a serious route, like with with um, the Fear Street kind of stuff, without obviously as much gore because you're still going to be on Disney Plus, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. you just increase the uh, the severity of it. You don't make it so schlocky. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I feel the, like the, the young adult it, R.L. Stein with the more kid scared R.L. Stein. Yeah. You know, they're trying to keep that. But separation. but again though too, it's like they can they can still have a good kids horror, but just update it. And I, so I hope I hope that they do that at least with the source material that they have. My question is, when Christopher Pike's going to get his shine? No. Yeah, no, it's coming. <laughs> Honestly, it's coming. Christopher. Yeah, yeah well, right. no, he does. Yeah, yeah he, he does. The Midnight have, Society. Which yeah, is coming that's from what Flanagan it was. Wasn't Chain Letter his too? It was. Yeah, yeah. I love okay. Chain Letter. Yeah. Man, The Last Vampire was really good. I still want to see Bury Me oh, Deep. Wow. No one's done yeah. Bury Me Deep yet. Mm. That's the only one I read. Okay. <laughs> Chain Letter was bomb. I still remember the okay. description of a girl getting decapitated in the car accident, the windshield glass slicing her head off, and I was. It was definitely a, a step above Goosebumps Very and R.L. Nice. Stein, that's for sure. Um, but even <laughs> the synopsis says, of Anthology this. Goosebumps or Die, yeah. Disney is the wrong home for Goosebumps. I don't think it's the I wrong I don't think home. so at all, honestly. Fact, if you watch, in just, fact, you know, watch just Beyond, they got a good really budget. think about it, if Disney is now dipping their toes into Alien and Predator and all those Fox properties, this is a great way for them to you know tiptoe into it with yeah. kids sort of horror because Disney is True. the kids thing if anyone if anyone should be walking kids into the scary door it might it might as well be the mouse that they've trusted yeah. their entire lives Fucking you know what Fantasia I mean? man that shit was scary that's true times. that's yeah. true um, all right, so Damn, we, dancing pot and pants. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on here to uh, uh, let's see. Brandon says, uh, "My dudes, when it comes to Goosebumps style shows, I'd rather see a revamp of Are You Afraid of the Dark?" Yeah, well, that, well they, they did, that, did that. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, the first two seasons they've done. I haven't watched the second. No, season. give me, yeah, give me, they're, they're give me an update. One, give me a though. revamp yeah. version of uh, Erie, Indiana. The TV movie. Good thing they did was I love that show. I watched the hell out of that. Dude, Erie, Indiana was great, man. It was on Fox. It was. Kind of forgotten. Uh-huh. Uh, over the years yeah, so Ben. Um, he yeah. Fuego just said that he he thought Just Beyond was was he actually really liked it. You said it was okay though. Okay, fair enough. No, it wasn't great, but for kids related stuff, like I still think that Night Books was really good for kids. Horror. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was good. <laughs> There's one episode in the final episode of Just Beyond would really resonate with you. Oh really? It's okay. about a kid and the lost father. And oh it's, really? It's very well done. Actually. Okay, I'll check yeah. that one out. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's move on. I'm gonna get rid of that graphic now, and Adios. hope that I didn't fuck up any others. <laughs> all right, time will come. So get rid of that and put that up. Boom. This I'm excited. Yes, for. American McGee's Alice. I've been trying to make this for video so game goddamn is long. Finally, uh-huh. well, and and people have just been trying to make it live action somehow. I think Manson. whether movie or otherwise. I mean, I am much happier with the fact that it's going to be a TV series. Agreed, one hundred. Uh, if it's as long as they keep it at like six or eight episodes, right? Don't go yeah. overboard unless, and then save the second game for season two. Because the second yeah. game was fucking dope too, yeah. and that madness, one literally uh, almost madness the madness returns. returns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that cool. one triggered my anxiety when I was you know younger. That was one of the early when I was first having anxiety issues. I played that, mm. and it was not good because <laughs> you start story. off like in a mental institution because of yeah. the first <laughs> game. Um, so anyway, I'm super excited. I think that this has to be done. Like they need to not get Tim Burton, but get. That sort of guy. Didn't he do the Alice? He didn't. He, did he produce the Alice through the Looking Glass? No, uh, he directed the he first. He did one. direct it. Okay, yeah, I yeah, thought they, so. Yeah, they brought on uh, Bob in there. To, oh goodness, the guy who did one of the Muppet movies did the second one, which was not. Man, both so of that's those the thing. If, if Tim Burton was going to do it, I wish he would have done this version instead. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I wish he would have done this Alice because this is much more something I would expect to see from him. You know, I guess. Maybe you get the director of Monkey Bone to do Alice. That could be <laughs> you know, interesting. That, you know, that, that sort of... That would be pretty neat, honestly. Yeah, honestly. Like, give me something Man, like I that. I have watched Monkey Bone. I Ever. liked Monkey Bone. Brendan Fraser, right? Dude, yeah. Brendan yeah. Fraser is... St- I don't... I, don't I like that. I like... Brendan Fraser was amazing. Yeah, Bedazzled. I thought yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, oh, oh. He's having to go through all the different characters. Oh, boy. Dude, he's still my... Dumbass Hugh Grant. The, uh, oh god, what was it? Um, Henry Selleck his, should do his, it. Dr- his, what has Selleck uh, done? I can't remember off the top of my head. What has Henry Selleck done? Oh, I know Tom god Selleck. Damn, the name. 
Uh, Ten dollar super chat from Stacy Pet uh, Petroselli. Thank you so Damn, much, Stacy. Stacy's got it going on. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Fountains of Wayne. Instead of yeah, Stacy's mom. Stacy's got, got it going on. <laughs> uh, all right, Henry S Henry Selick. Hmm. Is it Selick or Selick? It's S E L I C K. I know the name of the director. It's just I'm drawing a blank at the moment. Oh, like, and did, so Henry Selick <clears throat> must have directed Night Before Christmas because. Oh Burton yeah, yeah, not. yeah, and I think Coraline as well, and maybe Nine. If I remember correctly, nine, the number nine, the one that had oh um, nine, okay, nine yeah, was great, give it to man. that guy, yeah, and, and maybe in that as opposed to, but but that would entail stop motion or like you know, an, an Honestly, yeah, yeah, no, but, yeah, but, but live James action. and the Giant, like, he, Alice he did Monkey Bone, okay, well, <laughs> that's but, exactly, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I didn't realize. George, George oh, also it, yeah. he did Monkey Bone, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, well, Alice, Alice well. would be one of those ones that would do like yeah, a, a live action would be great. But for all the stuff and like design, it would be a That's lot awesome. easier and better for them to do a CG version, like what they're doing with, um, like the Resident Evil stuff. Yeah. Like if they did a CG version with Alice, they can do so much more. That's uh, true, but true. The, it needs a live a, action. I mean, I we have so the cutscenes in the game, you know, true. at this point. Yeah. So just let's do let's do a live action. Unless Leica was doing here's, it. Here's what, what might give happen. me a live action Dino Crisis. No, here's here's what they could do. They could do a live action movie. Um, well, they're doing a series, so they won't do this. But I was yeah. going to say, if they did a live-action movie, you could have, like, a animated spin-off movies of, like, her adventures while she was there. That'd that be we cool. we just didn't see. Kind yeah, of that'd be cool. Um, oh, I love those two games, though, man. They've been trying to get so a good. third one off the ground for the longest time, and they yeah. just had trouble finding funding. And I know that American I don't know McGee... how he f has trouble finding funding <laughs> with the cult following it's got. Yeah, Why didn't he kickstart it? You know what I mean? Well, like, well, he did the kickstart for his new Dark Pinocchio video game, which I think... Oh, yeah, that one... A while and that back. one did. It, it got, that one it found its it. funding. Yeah, yeah. 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 So what the hell, man? But I'm stoked about this. I will never forget... Playing the original game and the imagery and just the just in dark depth of how they expanded the storytelling with an adult Alice and an insane asylum and all this mm -hmm. different shit and I mean just the twisted takes on all the characters I loved that uh, my girlfriend at the time when the first game came out Brandy she cosplayed as the chick you know no, and did a badass job so yeah. uh, so uh, let's see uh, Ali is here uh, any of you guys watches Disenchantment isn't that the one by that's the Matt that's, that's, that's the raunchy I watched, the first, I watched, I watched that... the first season and it sucked ass and I, I did not continue I watched it with Lily when I was dating her and I hated it it was she so it was bad great, dude, and I was dude like, the I first season sucks it. I don't know if it got better but the first season sucks I hate it has it. an audience if it's made it this Stacey long Stacey said she Netflix, started right? it I, I would save yourself the time Stacy. it does not get better Mm. Not in the first season, anyway. Maybe the second season yeah. does, but there's so many other animated shows to watch that are worth watching instead of that one. Yeah, see, so Ali, Ali is saying she's on season two, episode six. Oh, there you go. I, yeah. I know some peeps love it, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I hated <clears> it. <throat> I really didn't like <clears throat> it. But you and I agree on that one. Um, all right, so let's. Uh, should we move on from Alice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Might as well. All right, Play so. those games, though. They are fantabulous yeah. if you can track really? them down. So this one is... Uh, there's, I'm trying to remember this story. Sweeney Todd. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah so that's right. Amazon right. Greenlight's a Sweeney Todd-inspired cannibal TV series called The House of Dolores Roach. So cannibal TV series, I'm like, so what, are we following the, the family from is Texas gonna, Chainsaw sort of situation, yeah. you know? Maybe. Is it going to be a musical? I was just like, about to say, are they going to be, gonna be musical, Are they going to be singing you know? throughout it? I yeah. imagine so. All these meat pies... No, is it, is it based on something or is that's it a fresh a, property? I, I just pulled Because when so I looked, it, it had a graphic a, and it's got, I think it's a play, right? It's based on a podcast, actually. Oh, a podcast. Yeah, Interesting. based on a podcast, which is more and more so because podcasts can be pretty much anything. It can be yeah. some up, idiot Mercer? on Spotify talking about shit. Well, dude, there's know, a new or, Amazon animated show, The Vox Machina, that is like, it's just, it's it's a D&D &D campaign, I think, that they just animated by the people behind, like, a real popular D&D &D thing, you know, mm -hmm. so... I'm like, wow, just yeah. podcasts and, and audio dramas are shows podcasts are now. They can mm -hmm. because podcast is the hot term. You're like, oh, we're doing a podcast, yeah. like you know, when they did Strawberry Spring for you Stephen know it's a King hot term recently. because they leaned on it in Ghostbusters. So. Yeah, same. But uh, and also Archive 81 that yeah. we just I'm watched. Watch that that you watched Archive 81 as well, right? <laughs> yeah, I did. That was also based on a that podcast. That was a super so slow burn. I wish that was shorter. Yeah, that could have been six length. episodes. Yeah, so agreed. Fine. Uh, but yeah, so this one is uh, based on the hit Gimlet podcast. Um, hey, fair first. enough, Ali. Agree to disagree. I'm glad you like it. 
Fair enough. Yeah, and uh, Final Destination 2's what up, Justina Machado is going to be apparently... Jerk says love disenchantment too, so maybe we're maybe we're in the minority, Fuego. No, that's okay. Maybe, maybe more own. people like it, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Uh, fair enough. Aaron Mark, who wrote and directed yeah. the original podcast, yeah. is going to serve as showrunner. So yeah, they're basically... Uh, let's just read a synopsis real quick. Dolores Roach is released from prison after 15 years and returns to a severely gentrified Washington Heights. 200 bucks and the clothes on her back. Her boyfriend is missing. Her family long gone. Dolores reunites with an old stoner buddy, Lewis, who gives her room and board and lets her give massages for cash in the basement Ooh. under his dilapidated storefront. Uh, empanada loca, the only remnant of her former life. Uh, when the promise of newfound stability is quickly threatened, Magic Hands Dolores is driven to shocking extremes to survive, and in the face of unexpected professional success, Dolores and Lewis become dangerously symbiotic, and Lewis must unleash his own peculiar predilection. So I'm guessing they're going to kill massages, and I, 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 right. I, I don't know where the... I don't like that. I don't know where the... <laughs> I get massages. I, I was going to say... Well, and, just uh, don't go to the sleazy don't, paces. Don't, don't go to the rub and tug like my little brother used to. Uh, oh my yeah. god. He was fond <laughs> of those, man. He really I, was. I don't... I don't are they actually exist here? Uh, yeah, I had, a, I had my buddy Matt and everything. He kept always talking about trying to get us to go he's like oh yeah. this sweet little now this place man <laughs> like no i'm not yeah. about that dude yeah the synopsis <laughs> does not really seem like it's giving that much of a sweeney Todd's connection but you know there's going to be some sort of killing yeah serving, I imagine. Uh, yeah know. yeah that that what you just said makes the most sense as far as what likely is going to come yeah. so so yeah curiouser and curiouser to quote alice from a uh -huh. previous story uh -huh. all yeah. right so we got a double dose of mortal Kombat adjacent uh well ah. direct and adjacent news so oh. first off there is a mortal Kombat sequel officially in the works yep. but this one is being written by the guy behind the exorcist tv series yeah instead Carver, right? of the guy that wrote the last one right mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, we are getting a sequel. Hopefully, the I mean the writing was one of the big complaints of the first one. So they're fixing what needs to be fixed in order to they, try and improve they, it. Which they is better, nice. they better. Like they were like, again, like the. I still think the better Mortal Kombat movie last year was legendary. Legends the Battle for the Realms. The, the animated yeah. ones, absolutely. That one was fucking great. Like mm. the best part about this Mortal Kombat movie was the opening. Yeah, yeah, like, agreed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which they debuted on one. I know, which was, was one of the worst things. It was the best part. Like it was the best part and the worst decision that they could have done by by doing an early release of that opening segment. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing too. It's like honestly, if if we would have gotten a little bit more backstory on the the early uh, feud between Sub Zero and Scorpion, mm -hmm. um, I, I would have made for such a better movie, especially if we focused more on those two characters like it was initially looking like we were supposed to right. and then you're going to have your other characters in there kind of in between and that was the biggest bait and switch that it, it was of, you it know? was and, and then you throw in this half ass cold cold bullshit. plot Let's, armor I bullshit I don't understand why they fucking made Cole the main no because then <laughs> one of the thing too is originally like what they were teasing him with that that was supposed to be our Johnny Cage yeah. and then it's like no we're gonna we're gonna put someone brand new in this and just piss everybody off absolutely stoops his character yeah. was boring one dimensional A didn't absolutely. bring anything interesting between in him and him and the family dynamic you, those should have been written right out of that script and yeah. it would have made it ten times better mm -hmm. um, between like the opening segment and honestly Kano was the highlight of of this, of oh, this yeah. movie? Homie stole the scene. Yeah. Stole he, he every absolutely scene did. He even though in. like they yeah, they rewrote ah. so much stuff from the lore, but certain aspects of that was really fun. Um, I <clears throat> I didn't like the fact of especially the the whole um, the him and uh, Cabal were frenemies kind of yeah. thing. When actually in the storyline they loathe each other, especially Cabal because. Kano's the reason why Cabal is looks the way he is. is they, so, like, <clears throat> having that and basically having them work together was it was garbage. Well, didn't get didn't Cabal get killed? Like, well, he did. Him. He got killed off real quick yeah. by Liu Kang. And honestly, yeah. I wasn't even that Jones on the casting of Liu Kang. Like, he, okay. he, he was okay. He was a, he was, was too okay. much of a softy. He was like Kung a baby. Kung Lao's gone though, right? Yeah, he, Kung he, Lao he got, got kicked up, killed off real quick, and yeah. he was one of the more more brutal kills in the film. He, he yeah. was and everything, but he also had one of the better fatalities. No, yeah. Saw, saw, saw yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. 
<clears throat> there were good elements, but a lot of really bad elements to this first movie that I'm really excited for them to course correct in the second one. Mm-hmm. I'm just wondering who Johnny Cage is going to be. You know, the Miz. Bring back Casper Van Dien. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Miz was uh, the dude, the wrestler who keeps throwing his hat out there that he wants to fight yeah. him so badly. But I don't know, man. I, yeah. I just remember him They're from not the fucking real the world. Miz, Johnny Cage. You know. he's, he, was, he was a real world guy. Now he's a wrestler. Come on. <laughs> Um, all right, let's. At this point, they might make John Cena Johnny Cage. At this point, like Ew. he's so popular. Ew. Wait, who? John Cena. I fucking hope not. Yeah, he wouldn't show up on film. I don't want to see that. No, no, you can't. You won't be able to see him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, honestly, let's also, beat that redheaded but, but, dead horse. But also, <laughs> too, though, he is. He honestly it's is. He's, joke. he's too big to play. Uh, he is. Uh, Johnny I'm Cage. just. I was just saying because of his popularity. No, exactly. I know. I know. I'm sure everyone wants to work with him after Peacemaker, which mm. legitimately he deserves. I've heard, it. honestly, I've heard he's entertaining. He, I've heard finally, really good things. About I finally Peacemaker. watched Ferdinand this year, um, a couple weeks ago. That was Got one. it's an animated oh, one yeah, where he played the, the bull. bull. Yeah, and yeah, I never, I never watched never it before, it. but it was a good I little never movie. Heard of it. it was a good little movie. Um, kids movie. And that's okay. what I do. I, I watch horror and I watch kids movies to balance myself out. No, I get you. Well, you got kids. Yeah. You know? Well, no, mm. I watch them alone. <laughs> Most uh, times, fair enough. I watch it before bed and installments. He's, he's got he he has night terrors. I'm almost done going through uh, Buck Wild right now, the new Ice Age uh, movie with nope. none of the original voices except for Simon Pegg. Um, so, oh, wow. all right, the next Mortal Kombat adjacent story is that the director of the first Mortal Kombat movie is now moving on to helm the System Shock TV series adaptation. Yeah. System Shock being a video game which eventually uh, led to Bioshock, didn't it? Am I, I'm am not I sure. I never that? played any of them. Am I, I wrong? That honestly sounds familiar. familiar. Um, like, because I feel like I feel like it was a whole like again, like another like Metal Gear thing. So you have like Metal Gear and then Metal Gear Solid and uh-huh. everything like that. System Shock Bioshock Connection. Uh, okay, so Bioshock Gone Home and System Shock all take place within the same universe. According to the Fulbright Company co-founder Steve Gaynor, um, so okay, cool. So that's Gaynor. that's the thing. I love the Bioshock ben, universe and System Shock. If it's in the same world, that works for me. Yeah. I'm interested. No, Ben, I totally agree. Like I hate it again. Like, Sub Zero way too overpowered and everything. And then Goro, who's supposed to be a champion fighter, oh, gets wow. just wrecked by some pissant I, I yeah. in, a, in a gold there. suit. Cole's yeah. Cole's power was literally plot armor. It literally was, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's Big basically time. like Goro just fucking bricked on his chest. Like, Here's armor. Yeah. Or, uh, or Goldar, sorry. Goldar. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, all right, yeah. so... I'm not... T- I mean, I don't really know enough about this property to properly comment on any of it, but I... I mean, Mahalo and a lot of my other friends are big into these games. Yeah, Sebastian so. Stan wouldn't be a bad Johnny Cage, but... We're still talking about that. Well, you know, I'm we're we're a little bit ahead <laughs> on the Mortal chat Kombat, right here. So and everything. It's just that. a wee bit. Um, no, it's a. Fa- I mean, if we if we wanted to cast Johnny real quick, we can do that. Let's let's think though. Um, I mean, I feel like Johnny wouldn't. Be what about what about Scar- what about uh, uh, Scarsgard? Hmm. Uh, I wouldn't go with you. No, Scarsgard. No, no. no. Think him? He, he's too <clears> he's <throat> not Swedish. He he's look too like. Swedish. They're all. He he's too like, not tall and big. He doesn't he doesn't look like what. I don't think he yeah. looks like Johnny Cage. No. Um, it needs to be someone kind of small and cocky, not not like. I don't know. And probably uh, would need to be within. the Sebastian same. Stan isn't a bad. Yeah, call, that's that's honestly. a solid pull. That's really not a bad call. Yeah. Thinking about it, or his clone from Eternals. Oh shit! Because <laughs> they, you know, they look exactly the same. I think yeah, I know who you're Irish, talking about. One Irish and one. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Sebastian Sands. But anyway, I, 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 haven't, I haven't watched good, Eternals. I heard that's nothing a good, but that's bad actually things. a good call, Doctor Death. So Eternals takes an eternity to get through. The joke yeah. everybody has made. You know, um. So. All right. See. Let's see. Uh, same here, Cecil. Horror adjacent kids show. I'd like to hear what you think of this. Gravity Falls. Gravity Falls. Here's the thing about Gravity Falls. It is currently my kind of anxiety calming show that I oh, watch wow. before I go to bed um, it's the first animated show that I've purposely gone back and am starting to rewatch now I'm, I'm again on episode like 7 right now oh, wow. of season 1 I watched it all a few years ago and I absolutely loved it I absolutely loved it we reviewed season 1 and 2 on the channel because I insisted on it um, I, I, uh, I'm not sure if I reviewed it with wasn't who I was with, with at the time, yeah. or if I just reviewed it by myself, <laughs> but I reviewed the oh, first two seasons yeah, for yeah. sure, uh, and I love that show. And yes, right now 
I'll watch, that's the thing, I watch about a half hour of something else, so in this case about a half hour of the new Ice Age movie, and then I switch over and watch an episode of Gravity Falls before I fall asleep. Mm. Uh, so I love Gravity Falls, and I don't think it needs, I would like more animated, I don't think it needs a live action thing or anything, but I, I just loved it. Yay mess says Ryan Reynolds as Johnny Cage. Also, uh, Mercer throws out uh, Chris Evans. Chris Evans. Honestly, okay, so Chris Ben, is too ben big. I think those names are Ben. I'm not. Those are too, I, I, both too big the, the, yeah, those names are way too big. Ben, honestly, I'm not. Like I'm names. really not opposed I'm to not Jensen, opposed Jensen, Jensen honestly, at all. That, honestly, that I think works. I think he'd be pretty he legit. Would fit pretty yeah, good. he just has to kind of bulk up, kind of cut down, and everything like that, just so he can. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, he wouldn't even need to bulk that much, really. Well, no, it's basically just cutting weight so he's a bit more yeah. trimmed and everything like that. Dude, the original guy, he's he's a Hollywood actor. He's yeah. not... He, he's he's a capable Hollywood yeah, actor. Yeah, yeah. The guy from the first film? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, he, he got away with being Johnny Cage very well in yeah. the first movie. Um, $500 pair of sunglasses, But realistically, asshole. he was originally based on, like, a Van Damme situation, mm -hmm. right? So, ideally, we should get someone <laughs> like <Stacey>. that. Stacy. <laughs> 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 Gravity Falls, my boobs <laughs> on my knees. Yeah, I hear that happens. Um, yeah. You gotta roll those it's puppies up. It's happening to me too, Stacy. Yeah, okay. you just gotta roll them up like a cigarette. Oh, okay. <laughs> Man, um, it just, it just means it just on. means that you can Stop eventually hot. you can put two patients to sleep at once with your pendulums. <laughs> You're getting um, very sleepy. Yes, we went there. Watch them <laughs> back and forth. Um, well, goddamn, he gave me a ball. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, early two thousands, Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, I mean, if we could go back in time, I'm sure we could pick a lot of sure. people. I mean, um, his hair is only gray or silver in some of the new jackets. That's movies. true. Yeah. Yeah. Also, if you want to see kaiju cock, hey, new, new jackass. Wait, no, wait, no. Wait, what? You, don't, you, don't what? See, you don't see a kaiju cock. You see a cock dressed as a kaiju. <laughs> there is a big difference between those two things. Uh, big so difference. what you're telling me is it's a cock monster. It's yeah, yes, that's yeah, exactly that's what very it much. What yeah, it, is. Yeah. it goes up against uh, the the turtle the. The, the turtle thing. What is the turtle one? Um, Gamera. 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 Yeah, yeah it goes God. up against Gamera. A snapping turtle Gamera. At one point. Gucci uh, no, no, did Spike yeah. Jones? Gucci Gucci Spike Jones. The cock monster. <laughs> I think that's the segment Spike Jones directed, right? If Gravity Falls is one my kid made me watch, and it's awesome. Highly recommend. That's mm -hmm. awesome that your kid brought it to you. That's really cool, Doctor Death. Uh, let's see. Bernie Gumbano is here. Hate to say it, but Chris Pratt would be ideal. And you know what, mm. Chris Pratt. That he's, wouldn't he's, be bad. His big, his name is too big, but he would fit the role really well. If you take a little bit of Star Lord and put bulk, in there, though. yeah, a little bit of Andy Dufresne. You, you see, he his Star Lord. Oh yeah, he was, bulk. was perfect mm -hmm. for oh. that. Well, yeah, that was that was mid um, him and uh, Parks and Rec and everything. But I feel like that he's like a bigger, yeah. stouter, muscly guy instead of Johnny Cage being like. More of a Bruce Lee Van Damme, where he wasn't well, like all that's muscle. True. He was more of like a skinny. Yeah, like, yeah. I guess that's true. Yeah, guy. it's yeah. weird to think that Chris Pratt looked more bulked than Van Damme, considering everything that Van Damme did. Yeah. In his, but Van Damme was very. I'm was gonna cut cut. Bison's ass. Like, Van Damme was just cut. Like, he was ripped. You know what might be fun is if you do. I think they're gonna go with a no name ish kind of person, uh, like they did with most of the other cast. Yeah. You know, they're gonna go with a smaller name. What I would think, uh, what here's what I would like to see: hmm. give it to a stunt performer that's like put in his time, that could no. pull it off, that like is that looking has for the a chops chance. And the smart. Yeah. You that could do it. Personality's gonna be key. Because because I watch I watch Corridor Digital's uh, doing a stuntman react, mm -hmm. and they have a bunch of the stuntmen on to talk about the stunts that they've done on film. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of guys that could easily pull off Johnny Cage from that series. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, definitely. Did it edit out boobs? No, it's, it's, it's no, like boobs. no. The boobs showed up. Boobs came through. Yeah, we you, sh you showed us your boobs. It's true. We Present them. them. <laughs> we saw them. Um, all right. So uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> she said, "Luckily, they're not down there yet." Okay. Uh, ben Grimm. I was uh, like, I hope that was a joke. I hope not, my dear. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'd be a TV guy transferring to movies cast realistically. Mm, yeah, that's yeah. not a bad call. That's not mm. a bad call. Now, so you said system Hell yeah, shock no, and, uh, no name stunt guy would be sick. I agree, dude. Oh, I think that's um, what, they what do. about oh god, what was well, his name? Well, because most um, of those peeps in this new movie were kind of more stunt what's, performers. What's the, what's what's the guy uh, acting, who right? played um, uh, Darth Maul and Toad? Oh, he's way too old, man. Ray, Ray Park. Ray, Ray Park. Park. You he's think? Always way too old. You think? Okay. Yeah, Ray Park's in his like fifties, I think. 
he played. Dude, dude, he can, he was, he can maybe still, 40s, maybe he can 40s. still spin he around and shit. Show yeah, yeah but he was towed in Darth Maul like over 20 years. Yeah, that's exactly. True. That's yeah. Kind of yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, but so I so they did say, but they they did say that Bioshock and System Shock are Super in the same. Are in the same universe. They're in the same universe, yes. Because you know, Bioshock just today, um, this new story broke that there's this new Bioshock fan film called The Interrogation of Timmy H yeah. about the yeah, audio logs or something. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I anyway. figure we we're yeah. getting oh, yeah, fan yeah. Films Apparently we're getting stories. Scott Atkins thrown out for Johnny Cage. I don't know who that is. The name rings a bell, but yeah, I can't I don't. say that I we gotta... well, as long as they don't do Clint Eastwood's kid. Putting in stupid Scott Atkins, yeah, he's a great stuntman, yeah. Scott Eastwood? Scott Atkins has been a stuntman. Yeah, check out what he... Yeah. yeah. So he's one of the guys that's been on the show. Um, Guy, uh, Guy uh, is... I don't remember. Guy something. He he played... Uh, he was Black Panther's stuntman. And he's 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 been in a lot... He's been a stuntman. Oh, for a yeah, yeah. I, I know this guy. Yeah, Scott Atkins. Yeah, no, he would... Oh, yeah. Yeah, he honestly, I would be okay with him being cast and everything because yeah. I know for a fact that he actually is trained in martial arts. He's, and he's, a, level of he's a badass. You really need someone who's going to be able to straddle that line. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah right. I remember him from the Undisputed movies. Um, yeah, I thought Scott Atkins too. Uh, oh, yeah, too, he, he was. He knows Hitman. martial arts exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what they need. You know, that's that's really he's supposed to be <laughs> like you know a martial arts guy. Yeah. Well, maybe he is supposed to. Not, not like he's supposed you know, to be not like Steven a, Seagal necessarily. Don't, but, don't but even. How oh, oh, dare you? No, Steven Seagal, Seagal is he's the a, fakest. He's of the a fake. joke of his former. Oh my yeah. god! He's known more as a sheriff than yeah. he is yeah. for, you're or a sheriff deputy or whatever. If you look for a bullet, you're gonna find a bullet. Hmm. Um, Under Siege fucking kicks ass. Though. Under Siege is great. Yeah. I loved Under Siege, god, yeah. especially for the birthday cake. Scene. Oh fucking Erica! Let me rip his. I rip his stupid ass ponytail off and choke him. Legitimately, Patrick it, Wilson it? could play him now. Have you seen how I just saw Patrick Brandon Wilson say is? that. Yeah. I came in. I came it's, in. It's for Aquaman, right? Oh, yeah. oh, the yeah. city, uh, Conjuring. Conjuring. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Moonfall. He actually... <laughs> I don't know. Like, he wouldn't be a bad he's one. He's too old. I feel like he is... I don't think he is. I think you need to go with somebody Look at this guy. The... Yeah, but at the same time, though, with, like, I say... He's big, dude. I don't dude. know. I feel... Look at that fucking shit. That's Johnny Cage right there. Because remember, the idea of Johnny is he's supposed to have been. He's a, a, he's, 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 yeah, he's a, 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 a washed up and yeah, everything. So yeah. he's he's had he's his, already yeah. He should have some years Age. on him. So if anything, a mid early mid forties. Guys, person. let me show you this uh, just for. Um, yeah, you let's know. look at this first uh, track. This handsome man, <laughs> Patrick <laughs> Wilson, shirtless, it's stud just that easy. muffin it's alert. It's just that easy. So, it's not the prettiest picture. Ooh, the vapors! Ooh, oh, the vapors! vapors. <laughs> um, you know, he's not making the best face in this picture, but look at this dude. Yeah. Look at this dude. Tell me that Shizzle. couldn't be Johnny Cage. I mean, and he's 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 in his late 40s to 50s as well. Yeah. I mean, good for him. Yeah, but that, that should easily be Johnny Cage, for sure. Hmm. Um, so, anyway... Uh, let's, uh, I guess, let's move on from there. Yes, Stacey. We're not even talking about yes, System Shock Yes, Stacey, we are looking at shirtless <laughs> pictures yep. of, uh, of Patrick Wilson. <laughs> yeah, All the hunky it. boys. Oh, <laughs> I don't love hunky boys. Or do, do I? Do I? <laughs> um, yes. Who else, by the way, who else is excited for the sequel for Psycho Gorman? I know I am. Uh, yeah. I, I definitely am. It was Lane one of my top Canada. last year. Um, okay, so we don't know much about System Shock, so I guess we can't talk that much about it. All I know is Bioshock was awesome. So yeah, that makes me. Excited. We were basically on a Mercer more was uh, tangent. Mercer was suggesting Michael B. Jordan as Johnny. Cage. See, I, I'd rather like. If I'm, any, not, I'm not afraid of that. Well, if anything, it bring him in, in a striker. That'd be a, he'd be a good striker. Yeah. I want to. I'd rather see him as striker. We don't honestly. need like a million white guys to play all their roles. Yeah, yeah. no, we, and honestly, striker striker is like. I honestly, he, for a second, I was thinking we need. Uh, an Asian Johnny Cage kind of thing, but Johnny Cage is were, meant to be. That's sort where of that's American where the Cole the queer dude came. Cole in. really did kind of take the Johnny Cage he, he aspect. Did. Of he did. That's why, much but he was a crappy they, fighter. It doesn't matter. He but since garbage. they already did that, let's make Johnny Cage Asian and do like you know. Well, we could. There's the, let, let's, let's do that. You know what I mean? Well, that's fine. Well, well, I mean, you that, that actually you would make sense because he would want to make a name for himself in America and maybe, after starting. Yeah. After starting, so so he would be Johnny Cage, but then you know this bad as Asian dude yeah. comes out like you know today's Jet Li like get, let's get the dude from the raid you know what I mean 
That that, kind that of would thing. be cool. Let's do that for Johnny Cage. You still have and to. And then have yeah, this. let's do Michael B. Jordan as Striker. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to be an expensive get. That'll never happen. But I'm fine with that sort of thing. We don't <laughs> need Jax to be the only black guy in all of yeah, the series. And, 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 like you know we don't I mean? need Nightwolf to be the only you know Native American or anything. Yeah, like that. dude, I'm I. They better do Nightwolf justice. I don't think Nightwolf will make part two. I don't think he's big enough. Depending on how they write it in and everything, especially if it's if isn't Nightwolf's kid in one of the games? Because no, I know they had a Johnny Cage. That and I'm not Sony sure. Child. Honestly, I'm not sure. I'm not I know sure. Jax's daughter is in the yeah, later I games. Don't know. And, there's yeah. two games that I haven't played at this point. So. Yeah, because there's X and then Eleven are the two that yeah. I haven't played. Mm -hmm. oh, I played I, I've just watched I've the fatalities. 10. I haven't played so. Eleven. I watched the fatalities. All right, let's move on. To number eleven, something Jesse, that we are not doing. This one goes to eleven. Hollywood actor for Cage wouldn't be bad. Either. I don't know I'd about be into, that. I'd be into it. Hey, You'd be shooting it. the ground with a nine millimeter. All of a sudden, the whole car shoots up in the in the in the sky. They they don't. He's not he, a striker. He, though, he's not a cartoon <laughs> character. It's not like he has to have Bollywood physics around I know, him. I know. That's his power. <laughs> <laughs> Everything happens in a Bollywood style. So as soon as he walks in, everyone's like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, Although uh, that that would be funny though if he's like in a Bollywood picture because he can't find any other work because he's a Hollywood has been. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so he's just doing. Like, have Jesus. either of you watched Eternals yet? No. Yeah, I you saw did. Right? I, so, I just I saw honestly, I've Kumail's heard Kumail's character, Kumail Nanjiani. Yeah. Okay. He, he could literally play Johnny Cage. Talk in the about physique another that he's dude. got right now. Dude, he got Bolt ripped. Up. Yeah, he's yeah. yeah. right now. So, or at least he was. I don't know. Quiet, Mercer. We're moving on. Don't sassafras me. Well, you guys brought me back. I was already past it. Yeah, like, well, let's talk about Johnny Cage. So mm -hmm. I, I dove in. Uh, Fuego. Yes. Oh. Bye, Stacey. Is doing season. Hey, take care, Stacey. Thank you for coming on. Thank, thank you, you for so the much, Stacey. Chat. And you rock, Appreciate yo. you. Make sure you go put your choice for the uh, the uh, your February review on the Patreon page. Get it I, on there. We, a we filmed a bunch of Patreon stuff today, <laughs> like yes. six or eight new reviews, something Ooh. like that. So, yes. yeah, making some progress, everybody. Um, Let us know. So, Fuego, Chapel Week, Season yeah. 2, has yeah. uh, been a go-go. Yeah, which honestly surprises me, but it was... Was it a complete story, or did it feel cliffhanger-y? It did not feel cliffhanger-y. It felt like it was pretty much all resolved for the most part, and hmm. so that's why when I saw this announcement, I was a little perplexed, but... They they claim that there's places that they plan to go with it. It was a success for Epics, which really made me wonder because I don't know a lot of people that have Epics. You're the only one I know that's one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like four bucks a month, and I subscribed specifically for this show to review it for Hail to Stephen King. Now you're gonna have and to spend so, another four bucks later. Yeah, well, there's also that. There, there's a couple other shows that are coming in the next few months that I okay. wanted to check out anyway. So a, a month of Epics is the equivalent of one VOD rental. You yeah, know, at the end of yeah, the day, it's so not it's that not bad. it's not really that bad. And uh, but yeah. Um, Man, Adrian Brody was so good in this show that some of the child actors, especially uh, the middle daughter, was terrific in this. I, I felt like the story was pretty much all wrapped up, but <clears throat> I guess they could explore more of the Boone vampiric curse and other elements of prejudice within the surrounding community. Um, but yeah, oh, season two is, uh, is a go based on... Uh, they will more or less be expanding beyond the Jerusalem Slot short story at this particular point. But then again, they expanded a lot in the initial series it was delightfully gothic had a nice baroque tone to a to a bit of it good actors involved death from supernatural was on there for a little bit a lot of other familiar genre actors that i've seen and so i mean i don't know where they will go let's just double check it was first broke by variety and um it's trying to see any other information not not really too much but it's confirmed to be happening so it's cool and i've recommended this show to a lot of people they have a seven day free trial so sign up and binge the 10 episodes and discontinue it if you want but i'll just grab your uh, info yeah. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just log into make your make sure stuff. to give that to you before you leave your sure yeah. mm -hmm. the new season will reveal that the boone's family curse didn't die with jacob and that de venomous mysteries remains as powerful as ever so that's the real like lovecraft connection about okay. you know just you know ancient ones and stuff like that you know the the, the tone of the worm and all that different shit. So yeah, I guess there there is more expandability, and I'm all for it. So bring it. Hell yeah, uh, uh, good show. Super Simi says, uh, Lisi's story. Should he read the book first or watch the series first? I think the series is better, so I would say watch the series. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah, Stephen King scripted all of the episodes by himself, and he said that if anybody was gonna either improve it or totally, you know, butcher it, butcher it, it's it was better be, be him. It was gonna be him, and that was the yeah. approach that he took. It's oh, from. Hey. Uh, it's from the same director that did um, Spencer, which was, ironically enough, uh, that Case 2 film where she played Princess Diana, incredibly directed, mm. that same sort of 
award-winning visual approach is taken to the Lisi story. Julian Moore and Clive Owen are both terrific. Dane DeHaan as our antagonist is great. The series is badass. Me and Marsha both loved it. You can check out a non-spoiler review that we did of it here on the channel. Mm -hmm. so. That's on Apple also? Apple TV Plus. Yeah. So if I get that, maybe Don will want to try that one more thing. No, I'm Marsha, we it. knocked it down. Uh, yeah, t yeah, we knocked it down to 17, Marsha. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> big jerk. Uh, Look what you did, you little jerk. <laughs> so, all right. She's not even here. She's talking shit. Uh, Jesse T. That's about right. Is yep, here. Yep. And, uh, all right. So let's, let's, uh, let's continue on then, shall we? Next story is, there's a new movie that is called Mary's Monster that is in production. And it's yeah. going to detail the process of Mary Shelley writing Frankenstein. Indeed. So that could be interesting. Yeah, I think I think there's it's I feel like it's it might be... be spurred on by a recent thing that's been happening where people are talking about the first science fiction writer is this person or that person, but they're completely discounting Mary Shelley. Yeah. And in yeah. fact, Mary Shelley is really the first science fiction writer, right? Because that's what Well, between her and uh, uh, Bram Stoker. Yeah, yeah, but well, that's a, but there's no yeah, yeah. sci-fi. There's no well, sci-fi well, aspect yeah. in, in Dracula, so this is literally she's the first, and so I have a feeling that that conversation that was really heavy a couple of weeks ago might have spurred some studio people to be like, yeah, let's let's get something rolling, you know, telling Mary mm -hmm. Shelley's story because apparently it was hard for her to get credit for what she had done. Yeah, yeah. Being, well, being, yeah, being, being a woman at the time the and everything like that. Yeah. yeah, they wanted to uh, basically put like a no-name uh, male's name and shit, basically mm -hmm. like a pseudonym name. So how mean book. how that's uh, to me? That sounds like a fucking good story. Yeah, I've well, yeah. 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 I've always that. loved the, uh, the Frankenstein story from Mary Shelley. It's a movie about the process of writing a book, Andrew. How dare you? Not a book about it. Which is yeah, which has honestly become a pretty popular thing as of late. I mean. There's a movie or a series coming out which is all about the making of the Godfather. Just like there, I mean, even even from a horror standpoint, Shadow of the Vampire, which was yeah. about making those not yeah, yeah. yeah. No which was done too, so. great. Yeah, it's a terrific movie. It was a movie we, within, we, within a movie within a movie. Within yeah. A movie. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, How so. is different from other movies? A biography film? Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be about Frankenstein. It's going to be about her trying to get the book written and get credit for it. I yep. assume for it. Um, so yeah, not it, that's how it'll differ. It's not actually about no. Frankenstein. Yeah. No, so yeah. Although it wouldn't surprise me, me if they do like interstitial things to break up when, her story. When she's writing scenes. When she's writing scenes, exactly. And, then, and they and they do that. The, I I, that, I, I hope that I hope sense. they go to because it's going to draw a lot more people in versus yeah. just having a straight period piece yeah, of, I, you of you know, writing. Be, yeah, of yeah. writing dumb, the book. They'd be process. dumb not to do it that way. Yeah. To be honest with uh, you. That would be pretty smart. Yeah. So all right. Um, I, I like, like books, books about, about books. books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm interested in Mary's Monster. I would like to see an animated Bernie, Bernie Wrightson version too. An animated Bernie Wrightson. Bernie Wrightson. <laughs> yeah. He. I mean, yeah. He. He's. He's fucking phenomenal. But obviously, he couldn't do it. So. Yeah. It would just have to be in his style. It just makes me wonder if it's going to be kind of along the lines of um, honestly I'm, the Elizabeth Moss film that they put out last year. It was last year or maybe the year before. It was called Shirley, and it was about Shirley Jackson who wrote Taunting of Hill House and a bunch okay. of other stuff, and just the chaos of her creative process, hmm. and the drinking and the mental illness and all kinds of shit like that. So I'm I'm curious if it's going to follow in that, which is more on the dramatic side, or if it will veer more into horror because the synopsis on Variety says terrified of, sure giving, ter terrified of giving voice to the darkness of her subconscious mind Mary Shelley locks into a dangerous battle with her own inner monster as she struggles to write her seminal science fiction novel Frankenstein they oh, deem it science fiction novel in the synopsis hmm. so, so there's a chance for super creativity there where if they if they visualize her inner monster mm -hmm. like a Frankenstein creature yeah. you know that'd be interesting yeah yeah, I'm I'm excited about this movie. This topic definitely intrigues. But uh, Ali brings up one. So like the girl um, from like the, the the birds movie, the Alfred Hitchcock one. Mm -hmm. That would actually be a cool one to make because she stopped the main character. She stopped acting after that movie because uh, Hitchcock traumatized her so badly on set. Mm -hmm. She no longer acted after that movie. Yeah, like that would actually be a pretty cool story and bring a little bit more light on kind of some of the well, messed up shit. That that, 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 was do. there? I think he's saying there was the girl about the making of the birds. Oh, so the oh, movie, okay, okay. Was oh, I haven't even heard birds. about that. So I'll check that, that out. Either, I'll check yeah. that out then. So hmm. I think that's exactly what you just brought up. But okay, well, shit. Nice. You have that movie. You can go watch right now. Uh, cool. Okay. You're like, wait, that actually. <laughs> <is so laughs> and a movie on Spielberg making Jaws called Bruce. Um, 
Huh? Is that? I mean, yeah. Is well, that, there's the Spielberg kind of loose autobiography film that's being made right now. So, okay. but that's yeah. actually a good idea, the making of Jaws, because the shark's still not working was a great documentary, and I think there would be enough. Because they pick a relative unknown, and they created the first blockbuster movie, and mm -hmm. it's there. That would be an interesting fucking story. I'd mm -hmm. watch the hell out of a dramatization of that story for yeah. sure. Yeah, but I you, love Jaws. You yeah, know. Well, I would watch a dramatization of the making of Jurassic Park. Oh, sure. how, I mean, hell yeah! All yeah. that. Oh yeah. Well, well it's cool. Like, even like the like there was one of the stories about the uh, the T Rex animatronics. So like when they were shooting in the rain, like it, would, it was a sponge, and well, it became four times as heavy. Well, between that, but also <laughs> like once the water would get in electronics, it would sometimes automatically turn on and it yeah. would shutter and yeah. move and freak everybody out. Yeah, like, I, would, I would crap myself and have a heart attack. Yeah, they had at the same a safety. Time. So so I just watched. They started a show on Netflix called The Movies That Made Us after they yeah, did The yeah, Toys yeah. That Made Us. And Jurassic, I watched the Jurassic Park episode. They talked a lot about that stuff. Mm. So. Even the stuff that they talked about in that special would make for a good dramatic movie mm -hmm. because of all the things that happened along the way. Yeah. Um, wasn't Brendan Fraser in a movie about uh, James Wales making Frankenstein? I don't know. Oh, yeah. yes. Gods and Monsters. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's a new one on me. But yeah, that's that not about the original book. That's about the making of Frankenstein. Yeah, it was so. with him and uh, Ian McKellen. Really? Okay. Yep. yep. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Okay. I'm down for that. Um, all right, so let's let's move on from here. <clears throat> Onward. We got to keep going here. Uh, story number thirteen is the supernatural prequel yeah. series. The Winchester gets a pilot order from the CW, and yep. this is coming from the uh, the news desk of no fucking shit. Because <laughs> who didn't know that this season? Yeah, they went 15 years, and and the CW wasn't gonna want to at least yeah. watch one episode well, of this. Well, they like, got uh, fuck out uh, here with that. Ackles recently on uh, Michael Rosenbaum's um, uh, podcast, the guy who played Lex in Smallville. Uh -huh. um, He's got a, his Inside of You podcast. Yeah, his podcast. I love his it's podcast. Inside it is. You. No, it's yeah. great. Um, but no, recently he just did another one with uh, Jensen. He was talking about the whole uh, meeting that they did with the CW. And basically, they had it on Hush Hush for months. His Zachary Levi episode was amazing. Was I haven't Zachary. watched that one yet. That's, on, that's actually, on I know, that's on my, so my uh, watch later list yeah. and everything. I haven't gotten to that one yet. Yeah. Mm. Um, but uh, no, I'm actually going through the Tom Welling one right now. Yeah, um, that's a good one too. Yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, but no, like they like it was basically just him and the CW execs kind of talking about this. Obviously, he he and he was talking about he called up uh, Kripke kind of on a final green light to say, hey, can we do this? Because he still does own the rights to uh, to the characters, mm -hmm. and where this one is going to be taking place is for John and Mary Winchester. Yeah, so that's that's I'm really excited about that. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, uh, uh, again, I think it was, that was never in question that they were going to want to at least want to. Uh, well, they tried, well, they tried it. originally doing the Wayward Sisters. Well, that was, that was bad. The, like, they did a backdoor pilot in the main show. Yeah. That, yeah. And they also well, that, but that's well, what I'm saying. Like, that's why that. everyone was a little, like, wary on, mm -hmm. on another, like, oh, we're trying to do another spinoff kind well, of Well, I was thing. more interested in that spinoff than the one about, what, the Chicago vampire mobster shit that they tried as a backdoor I, pilot. I too. don't remember that one. All yeah. I remember is the, uh... Ben Grimm, the, the, I think you actually CW, had that reversed. I think the it was CW Jensen animated that, that wasn't garbage. told about it. Um, I think it was Jensen that wasn't told about it at first. No, it? no, no, it's no, Padalecki. It was, yeah, um, was it? yeah, yeah Padalecki. Jared, Jared didn't even know about it. Yeah. It was Jared. Okay, yeah, because so he, so called, he did, Sorry, Ben. You yeah, were right, and, and you were then right. like Jensen, I thought it was Jensen, No, Jensen mentions it on the podcast and everything. Again, he didn't. <laughs> want yeah, because he said it's all good now. Yeah, he didn't want to. Yeah. He didn't want to say anything in case it just fell through mm -hmm. and everything. So it's like one of those things. Like he heard about it. Hey, they greenlit it. He's like, and then they posted it over over line. This and is, then he got a message like, hey, like, what the hell, man? Yeah. This and is then, the other yeah. thing to keep in mind, though, is that this is only a pilot order, and they obviously had mm -hmm. those backdoor pilots for those other two things that didn't amount yep. to anything, so there's no guarantees. I think the presence yeah, but the thing, of the Jensen difference is, is going to be narrated. No, the this. difference is the main show was still going. Nah, when they sure. tried the back door, they yeah. didn't need to do other stuff. There yeah. is no more Supernatural. I think yeah. it's much likelier that they will make this one a go. Yeah, mm -hmm. but then, I mean, as I have found out between the comic books, between the novels, I was just reminded recently that there was that Supernatural anime 
Which is an oh, yeah, I have episode that. anime series. But Dude, that was only, garbage. Only, I've never but watched that was garbage. Don't watch it. Oh, really? Only one of them did the voice. Yeah, yeah. Padalecki was the only one who did the voice. But other than that, the animation mm. and just everything, everything about the animated it show, it was fucking garbage. Yeah, yeah. Animation yeah. wasn't that. Horse shit in a handbasket. <laughs> yeah, so it makes me wonder, will they be trying to get those actors who played the younger versions of John and Mary? Nah, I don't no, think No, you think so. they'll recast it? They'll that? just recast I, I mean, the mm. fact that you're going to have Jensen narrating it as Dean is kind of cool. So that's the one aspect of it. Without it th- why would they have him do it when Sam's the one that survived? It's weird. Right? But, but at the same, when did Dean get a chance but, but, to narrate but, 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 his well, story? But at the same well, time, remember, he was the one. Well, it would I mean, be it, honestly they'd be better off doing um, like Bobby or something like that versus one of the one of the boys because they're they're not around at that time. Yeah, it should be Bobby, you're right? It, like they should get him to narrate it. That's true. Uh, well, I, agree, says, I, I agree. Ghost I agree. From the perspective yeah. of narrator, I want I want the Ghost Facers. Uh, no, the ghost face was spin off. <laughs> it'd be <Yeah>. so great. <laughs> it'd be like, it'd be like um uh oh what was the uh the it might be too paranormal much, one there that they just watched. Uh Ali sends in uh five uh pound, I think, super. Hell yeah. Um Thank to you. Robert the girl is an HBO twenty twelve ninety minute long British television film cool. about that making up. So well, there you go. Thank you, my dear. Perfect. Thank I will you. go check that out. Thank you, Ali. And again, awesome. thank you for the super chat. Yes. Much appreciated. That was to the easy. Um so yeah, Pat, like did you he, say Madeer? Yes. I don't. I think that's. I think a, it's. I think that's a is Ali. Ali. Oh, Ali. I think okay. it's Ali. Ali. Well, then I will change that to dude. <laughs> my dude. <laughs> my dude. <laughs> <laughs> I read that as dude? Ali, honestly. <laughs> But yeah, no, Padalecki uh, is Padalecki is uh, all on. He's nothing but Walker, Texas Ranger, right now. And Jensen actually is doing, I think, one or two episodes for directing on that. Well, and obviously Jensen has, you know, it's season Jensen three of the boys. Is, well, exactly, yeah. Jensen, or, I'm sorry, Jared, Jared has Walker, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jared, ha- Jensen Jared has Soldier well, but, but, Boy. But no, but, uh, Jensen around. Eccles is going to be doing a couple directing episodes for, oh, okay. for Walker and everything. Because oh, really? he directed yeah. a few episodes of Supernatural. Yeah, yeah he did and everything. Yeah. Um, okay, so How I Met Your Mother, but Supernatural? Yeah, right. Yeah, kind of, I guess. I could, yeah. Um, all right, so let's move on. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think I got that. All right, so um, next is a uh, new upcoming Saw film. We'll see the return of Tobin Bell's John Kramer character. And I believe I saw a story where it said it was going to take place around Saw 3's timeline. Okay. Which would make sense. Okay. Because that's when he I was, I was about to say, I'm like, how the hell are you going to bring him back again? Yeah. But I don't like that they keep going back in time because then they're gonna have to tie it into all the other movies and it's getting mm-hmm. so. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna screw point. up their own continuity so, so badly. So convoluted. Happens to the best of them though. If even Star Wars in their official new Disney canon can contradict themselves here and there, yeah. I mean, it happened to friggin' anybody. But uh, it was uh, broke on uh, coming soon. What did they contradict themselves on? What are you talking about? Uh, it was a little bit. It's Clone Wars stuff. It's you know mm-hmm. certain characters. The Order sixty six you know. thing that was in the last episode. No, no, no. I'm talking way back. I'm talking oh. when Disney first acquired. Like, Did you, Are you watching Book of Boba Fett? I was waiting until the final episode. Yeah, I haven't Do you know who yet. just appeared in the Unfortunately, last one? Unfortunately, I do. Okay. It's been spoiled for me. Because I have never watched Clone Wars, so I didn't know. All I knew is, this is a cool-ass character, but apparently everyone were losing their fucking minds. He's badass. I know who mm-hmm. it is. Okay, yeah, interesting. Yeah. He's well, never been in live action before. It's a bounty hunter. Well, mm-hmm. he's, he's, he's supposed to be a clone, correct? No. No? No, we're not talking about Boba Fett. There's a different character. No, I know. Fett. I know. He's, he's blue. Yeah, we're talking about. I know who you're talking oh, okay. about. Okay, okay. The Western right. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, I, 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 I know he's supposed to be that character. And him, he, oh, and, and him showing up, he's supposed to be. Like and, a, and him like showing he, up makes complete sense because that character lines, yeah. interacts with Boba Fett as a child a lot in the oh, film. Okay. Oh, really? So, Interesting. Okay. okay. But, All right. Um, so anyway, that was a sidetrack. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what were you gonna say? Honestly, about Je- Jesse T, I'm right there with you. I'm not a huge fan of the Saw series either. They, they Spiral sucked ass. Yeah, Spiral they, sucked. They I fell, fell in love quick. with Saw upon the rewind. I, I, I never liked, watched. I like the series. Five is so underrated. Me and me and uh, Jason Smith both agree. Five is one of the stronger efforts in the series. Um, three is really good too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I I don't like six very much. The final chapter. Uh, despite uh, uh, Patrick Flannery being in it, Sean Patrick Flannery, oh, okay. I dig that actor, man. I keep the seeing him in these, in these shorter films and some these smaller little, uh, I don't know, direct-to-video Red Fox shit. He's still got it, man. He was Young Indiana Jones. He was Boondock Saints. They're mm-hmm. making a third one of that. Oh my god, He's I keep forgetting it, he was Young Indy. Yeah, he was Young Indy. Oh Indiana man, I, I, I watched those a bunch too. That, I remember him like Indiana good, Jones uh, yeah. meets Dracula. 
What was that one? Oh, that was a good one. But as Cecil was mentioning, according to the outlet, the movie would be told from Kramer's point of view and could take place before, like right before Saw 3, apparently. So but again, true. how are you going to do that without... You'd have to introduce a whole different group of people because everything else was wrapped up. In yeah. the other series, so... But Josh, Josh so Stolberg is back on board for them and you know, assisting on the script and everything. I don't know, this feels very much like a reaction to the, the like lack of excitement about a lot of Spiral. You know, it, it was very lukewarm and it's... I mean, it's not like he was super young-looking. Just go back and tell a prequel story. It took place a couple of years earlier. Re you know, just a self... No. No? He, again, he's not. He's he's pretty old in the first movie. So oh, yeah. even if you did it now, you, you could still pass him as uh -huh. you know that era John Kramer. Yeah, and you said it just a couple of years before the first movie. Yeah, um, yeah basically you know? do it like focus more around his initial have it be his first like, like, diagnosis. Her, it, well, no, have it when be his first. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah, when he first because gets that, the diagnosis. Because that's it's what his first, It's his trial run, yeah. and it's a self-contained story before. The, the first movie launches. Well, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm like, saying. Because like when he gets diagnosed and everything, um, it's at the hospital when that guy kills his wife, and that's where he gets the idea to start yeah. having the, the basically those games mm -hmm. and start it basically from there. That would be yeah. That, that would be smart. If they that, touch on in five. That would be more. That would be the more smartest. Amount. I think that's the best way in with him. You know. Yeah. Way back in, I should say. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, chili for dinner and it's delicious. <laughs> um, I still Bam have tablet. to watch Jigsaw and Spiral. Uh, Jigsaw wasn't bad. It I had a good like ending. Jigsaw, I like actually. the ending yeah. of Jigsaw, but um, Spiral sucks. Uh, yeah, Jigsaw was sucks. from the guys who did um, Daybreakers and it was I definitely love Daybreakers. Dude, Daybreakers, yeah, Daybreakers is badass. That, that, that actually, Daybreakers. Daybreakers. like, so like the pre pre little thing uh, for when we do our uh, best monsters. I actually did throw the vampires of Daybreakers on for my best vampires. Nice. Like cool. those, I still to this day I love the hell out of that. Movie. That's a great film. Sam it was Neil, Ethan Hawke. Yeah, and like yeah. And, and like how they changged up the lore and everything. Just so even slightly, it was it was fresh enough. Mm. Like, I All right. so clean. Well, let's yeah. move on. We only Come on, have a you couple had the sunlight burning left. out the infection. Mm -hmm. Like that was good. We haven't had to revisit that one for quite a while. Yeah, I need to pick it up on Blu-ray. I still have it on DVD. All right, so the next two stories are very, very similar. Um, I'm just trying to find it real quick. Yes. Joseph Gordon-Levitt will play cult leader Jim Jones mm. in the upcoming film The White Knight. So Jim Jones, yeah, famous cult story. Jonestown. Yeah, Jonestown. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if you guys haven't heard about the about Jones, uh, Jonestown massacre, like that, check that out. That's a messed up story. Like that. That's where we get the phrase between Jones the and, and mm -hmm. just the cult. cult Isn't people that in what general? that other movie that just came out a couple of years back was based on? The as one well? that was I like the it was a faux faux documentary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What was it called? The something uh, I don't know. yeah I think it was the sacrament maybe, maybe. Yeah. yeah except has a, a song called Kool-Aid based on accept. Jim Jones check that out if you guys haven't ever checked it out listen to accept um, uh, I mean fine Joseph Gordon-Levitt he's a charismatic guy mm -hmm. I, I think but he's a great actor and I think yeah. I think he would do really well for this well yeah. well and the thing that makes a little bit more sense about this casting specifically is that Jim Jones was like he was like a um, oh goodness, uh, like a Ted Bundy kind of guy. Where he, was he, was a, a, he was a ladies' he was a man, handsome ladies' man. He also slept yeah. with men too, so he swung both ways in that regard. Mm -hmm. But as, as far as like swooning his congregation, so going with a good-looking dude like Joseph Gordon-Levitt makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. Um, I know uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. This was a passion project that he's producing, so he's been trying to get this made for quite a while. And the fact that we're finally seeing a little bit of movement as far as casting mm -hmm. and additional information, and also you're gonna get a little Chloe Grace Moretz in this one mm -hmm. too. So oh, no shit. yeah, no. she's seeing a little bit of career resurgence. She did that um, that Mother Android movie, which eh, it wasn't that great, but you know, nonetheless, uh, White Knight. I'm, I, this is such a grotesque and fucking scary real life story. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why. People like Stephen King and various others. There's been so many documentaries. Some there's been TV miniseries. It's it's a story that's been covered in the zeitgeist so many mm -hmm. times. And I'm, I'm up for another take on it. So cool. Yeah, done done right and everything. As long as you like, you really you don't hold back and you actually show the just the depravity of what him and the congregation did. Hmm. This movie's yeah, down in could, Guyana. Dude, yeah. it, this movie has the potential to be really messed up. Yeah, over nine. But in a good way. Over nine hundred people died in Weirdly. one of the largest mass murder suicides on record. And mm -hmm. yep, it, it is called the Sacrament. It's a Ty West movie. Yeah, oh, you guys oh, haven't okay. seen that. That one's pretty damn good. Man. I didn't like it because I, I just don't like cult movies. Yeah, it's the same reason I didn't like Midsummer. Same mm -hmm. reason I don't like any of those fucking movies. But it's based on the memoir called oh, Seductive okay. Poison of somebody who actually escaped Jonestown. Oh. So Deborah Layton's. Oh, memoir. the oh yeah about the the kid who was out on the supply run. 
and everything. Yeah. 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 yeah Chilling that, stuff. Man. Yeah, that was messed really up because he was he, he got sent out on a, on a random supply run, and then they ended up getting raided, and that's when just, they were like, just feed it to everybody, mm-hmm. and he was the only survivor. Um. All right. So yeah. let's see. Uh, you have anything yes. else popping up in the chat? Not He's really. Mm-hmm. Jake uh, Corn Corinthos. Uh, Gene Jones, who totally not Jim Jones in the sacrament, was great. Oh, got it. Yeah, that was the name of the character. Yeah, because the only it, thing I liked. About yeah, it was like loosely based, so it just it had a lot of parallels, though. So, um, <laughs> actually, they skimped on the Kool Aid. Jonestown used flavor aid. <laughs> that's no, I think he's saying that for real. Like he's saying that's my will actually for the night. Apparently, oh, that's shit. real. Okay. Well, wouldn't surprise me. Fucking cheap bastards. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna drink the good shit when you. Yeah. Drink. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the next one, which is a very similar story in that Keanu Reeves is going to be playing America's first serial killer in the upcoming film, The Devil in the White City. It, is this supposed to be H.H. H. Holmes? Or? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's H.H. H. Holmes. Is oh, it? Perfect. There Damn, because, okay, so this movie's going to be messed up. Well, and Keanu Reeves was an excellent serial killer in what, The Watcher, was it called? I forgot about that movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. He was fucking Oh, yeah, he was the that. raincoat with the... With the, the yeah, the yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. He was so, wow, so forgot. scary and good in that movie. I can absolutely buy him being the first, you know, H.H. Uh, H. H. Holmes, for sure. Oh. For sure, I could see this guy. Like, dude, Holmes was messed up. He was a depraved, disgusting person. I did like The Invitation. I agree. That was a good cult movie. That one I actually got into. I only watched that like a year ago. That's the Karen Kusuma movie, right? That was really good. That Damn, ended with the, the like the fires across yeah, where you the saw mountains them, yeah. and stuff. Oh, we did do the review the of that one. Yeah, 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 that was yeah. great. That was a, a fucking good one. chilling movie. Talk yeah. about a good movie. There are some cult movies where I'm okay. Yeah. Just like there's some bunker movies I'm okay yeah. with. Yeah, I do remember going into The Invitation of like, oh god, it's going to be another cult one, but being pleasantly surprised with how everything turned out. Yeah. So this is an interesting detail here. It's I call that more of a fucked up dinner party movie. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, that, you know, that's like not the other really one as much that was of a really cult. big recently. Um, not uh, the one that everyone talks about loving. You're next. That's also a fucked up dinner party. I haven't movie to me. seen your next yet. Yeah, it's a dinner party that gets interrupted. When well, also there was kill the, everyone, also so. there was the one Silent Night. Ready or Night. Year. Fucked up dinner party movie. To okay. me. Like you know, I, I, I like those mm-hmm. kinds of things. So to yeah. me, that one is a fucked up. Hell dinner party movie. Judgment. Fucked yeah. up dinner party. <laughs> I, I actually didn't. Not I didn't hate that one. <laughs> I know that was the one that we're all like, okay, they're they're coming back I a didn't little hate bit. It, yeah. <laughs> Silent Night with Kieran Knightley that I talked about during the fucked one of the Fucked up dinner party. Yeah. I might give that a try then. Now so this is what spam out of there. so. For a little bit of additional information, courtesy of Bloody Disgusting, so it's unclear if Reeves will be starring as H. H. Holmes or if he's going to be the guy who built the murder castle for him, the, the oh. architect uh, Holmes, who actually did that. So uh, it's going to be a Hulu series, uh, tell the true story of two men, an architect and a serial killer, whose fates were forever linked by the Chicago World's Fair of 1893. Jesse T says the book is good. I'm guessing that's the book right there. Mm-hmm. The yep, that, that's what they're basing it off. Mm-hmm. Of. Yep, that's cool. And uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, his name pops up again. So weird casting. Uh, it doesn't give me H. H. Holmes vibes. Did you want? If you haven't seen. Uh, but that, they didn't that say movie? that he's H.H. H. Holmes, though. He might right. be playing the architect instead. Yeah, he might be playing the architect. But either way, if you haven't seen The Watcher, watch it. You'll see how creepy watch Keanu, the the Watcher. Watcher. Keanu can be. Watch The Watcher. Or was it The yeah. Gift? Am I thinking of The Gift, or was it The... Oh, but The Gift was the same Raimi one, which had Craig Kinnear and Katie Holmes and Kate Blanchett. Okay. I remember watching that. Okay, so that's Good not movie. the one I was thinking. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but either way, I'm excited no, for this. No, the Watcher was with the, the hooded... The yeah, raincoat. okay, so I was... Yeah, right the raincoat okay. and everything, yeah. Um, American the Horror Story had too. loose storylines in a hotel around H.H. H. Holmes. Yeah, they, um, they touched I on never a watched, lot. They I also, never watched Hotel. They, they also have been obsessed had, with serial killers for the last few seasons. 84, obviously, had yeah. serial killer stuff. Well, uh, and the, the killer, had the killer, killer from stuff. 84 was in Hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, or you know the the Night Stalker, they had him stopping by for dinner in that yeah. one mm-hmm. episode, where as, all as the, well as all the, the murderer ghosts show up, mm-hmm. as well as Eileen Eileen um, Warnos, yeah, mm-hmm. 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 American Boogie Woman, yeah. <laughs> uh, always gonna the, refer watch to her the as one that. With, yeah. Watch the one with Chad Michael Murray. That one where <laughs> he was playing Bundy was good. Um, yeah. uh, let's see, Marissa Tomei. Chad Michael Murray see. plays Bundy. Yeah, really, he's good. He's DiCaprio was supposed to do an H.H. H. Holmes movie, but went nowhere. Well, this is the DiCaprio he, was supposed to play uh, Spider-Man originally. <laughs> well, apparently he's still behind this. He bought the film rights in 2010, and uh, Scorsese is... Wait, so he's it, behind this one and the other 
for yeah. the one with Joseph Gordon Levitt, which is what's interesting. Oh, that's yeah, funny. so he's okay. in, he's intrigued by it. So uh, DiCaprio bought the rights in 2010. Scorsese will also be on board as he's an a red herring producer. in the gift. Okay, so he was in the gift also. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he was in the gift too. Yeah, he was okay. rocking the beard in that one, if I remember correctly. Gotcha. Um, yeah, the gift is not to be confused oh, with yeah. the other one that had uh, Jason. Um, that was more recent. Yeah, that, yeah, that was more recent. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyway. So that's yeah. This is exciting. And now to our so final the last story. story, which is kind of just not—it's kind of a non-story story. But uh, James Wan, or J- the new James Wan produced Sony film called Thread, is yeah. being described as Back to the Future meets Aliens. And no, that's, I mean, just that's from the that story. description, <laughs> so, sign me the fuck. Yeah, I mean, I hadn't heard of this movie before, so I mean, Back to the Future meets Aliens. Sure, I mean that's kind of to find the story honestly, isn't that isn't that what that huh. Chris. Uh, Pratt movie was last year? Which one? Tomorrow War. The Tomorrow War. Wasn't that basically Back to the Future meets Aliens? Kind of was. Yeah, because yeah. the, the I didn't people... like that. I hope this is better That's, than that's that. literally yeah. what that was. That was Back to the Future meets <laughs> Aliens. People come back from the future, like in Back okay, to the Future 2, right, and right. ask to go forward to help them. It's literally Back to the Future 2. Hmm. Well, Tomorrow I mean, War is Jay- literally Back to the Future 2. Someone already did that, James. Come on. Get us a better description. Give me two other meets. He's maybe, this one's <laughs> out of shit. Maybe, maybe this can actually be R-rated and fun in comparison with that other one. So I, don't mm-hmm. know. I was not a fan of the Tomorrow War. The monsters looked cool enough. I yeah, guess, the mo- the know, creatures but... design and everything like that. But you didn't really have like I would have liked to have more, more, a little bit more of a backstory. Nightmare Marsha. On, on I hope the, we the see you next week. Shit. So yeah, Atomic but J.K. Monster. Simmons was good in it. I liked at least. You still got a uh, uh, the shirtless page of that dude up. <laughs> what? Well, last time I saw you, you still had uh, the, what's the Patrick his, Wilson. Yeah, you still had Patrick. Yep. Oh, you still I guess got so. you still got hunky. Oh. Saving that for later. Yeah, you hunky still got boys. the hunky boys up on there. Hunky boys. <laughs> um. So yeah, no, I mean, it's called Thread. We don't really have a lot of details besides that <laughs> very brief description. But James Wan's Atomic Monster is uh, is putting it together uh, along with Jeremy Slater, who we were just talking about earlier, you know, <laughs> of the Exorcist fame. <laughs> also working on the, the the second Mortal Kombat. So it's. Yeah, it's a non-story because one will produce. I, so he'll he'll produce. He's not EPing. He actually is on as a producer producer for this. So perhaps he'll be a little bit more hands-on with the process. Who knows? I but. enjoyed it too, Marsha. I'm just saying that's exactly what they described when talking about his next movie. It was Back to the Future meets Aliens, and that's literally what the Tomorrow War was. That's why I contend just make this one R-rated. Oh, hey, Jake makes it. Pretty good things. point. It's a, um, yeah, aliens with time travel, similar to how De- Happy Death Day was a slasher across with Groundhog Day. Yep, yep. Yeah, and uh, apparently recently, uh, Blumhouse dude said one more time that they're still trying their damnedest to get to get the third, to get one, the going. third one going. They're they're making another very concerted effort. So. Well, and one of the stories also that we didn't touch on is that I mean, again, it was just a casting switch. Jessica mm-hmm. Roth is taking over for Samara Weaving in the new Sam Raimi project. We talked about a couple yeah, months yeah, ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. the one with Bill so, Skarsgård that's supposed yeah. to be over the top action horror comedy, ultra violent craziness. Um, also, I know what you did last summer got canceled, and we didn't really talk about that. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's kind of a non non topic at this particular point. But we did cover a good chunk. Well, of we the... talked about that in our TV thing. That's yeah, yeah, that's true. That. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good call, good call. So yeah, we did. Th- this was most of the stories that we tossed over from December. Because December being... was also a time travel aliens thing. Yeah, you're not wrong. And they've been trying to make the sequel to Live Die Repeat for a while now, mm-hmm. and they still can't get that one going. With uh, but they can Doug make back to back Mission Impossible movies. Uh, Tommy Cruise, and he just keeps delaying them, just like he delayed Top Gun again, just like he delayed oh, both well, next. He wants, both of well, the, because he, he wants, wants people to actually people go to see it. Yeah, 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 I guess I can't blame him. So, um, it's, we're going to get a year that's going to have Top Gun, Mission Impossible 6, Mission Impossible 7, like all in one <laughs> He's year. He's like, we're going to space God. them out. like The year of Cruise. Yeah, space oh, God, them out four don't. months four months yeah. apart, and we're good. Please don't. All we need is like a follow-up on Risky Business at this point. But, uh, in ben said, Give me a cocktail sequel all these years later. Oh, yeah. I'll take that. Ben, uh, <laughs> ben says there's a new movie uh, called Time Cut coming out this year. It's basically Back to the Future meets Scream by the makers of Freaky. Okay. Right. Right. I, I haven't gotten around to Freaky was fun I, heard, I haven't gotten around to that I heard, I heard mixed Nick Spawn is good I think you freaky And I like you uh, I love turns that Turns out band. they don't They don't <laughs> know Dion what it is Dion it's so great Is it Dion word or Dion I think I it, always I heard it was Dion I, I, it, However you want to pronounce it I really don't I don't, I don't think they care it's, it's just like it's not Dead Mouth 5 I think yeah. they should it, yeah, I think they should Yeah I think they should Stick to making music As opposed to Chopping Like as they were stolen of it Tomorrow War was a great home movie To watch with my 13 year old That's about it Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Fair enough. 
I like Chappy aside from Did y'all did Drag Me to Did y'all like Drag Me to Hell? That was his last horror film. I did. Well, okay. Everyone loves Drag I, Me to Hell. Well, what's funny is like, actually, okay. Drag Me to I Hell, it. it took me a couple watches to really like that. It's okay. I'm when sure. I first watched it, I didn't like it at all. I, I thought it, it was theaters, so dumb. <laughs> and I'm, I'm a huge fan of Sam Raimi. That's the problem. I like. I was upset with myself that I didn't like it. But yeah, a couple of rewatches later, I definitely enjoyed Drag Me to Hell a little bit. I might have to try it again. I've only watched it the once, but I just thought it was really cheesy most of the way through. And I thought the part that everyone thought was so scary, where the, the old lady is like gumming the girl's mouth, like <laughs> it was so fucking. I was it was laughable. I like the ending because innocence does not get rewarded. I love that. But other than that, nah. So apparently we have a, a shout out for uh, Kaylee. Hi, my uncle's a part of this channel, so could you give me a shout out? His name is Andrew. Oh yeah, hi Kaylee. Most Steph, Kaylee, rock on. I Thank think Andrew must be, must be in the up. chat. Good to see you. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah. Yes, um, the Andrew is, a, is a, Yes, he is a big part of the channel. He's been in the in the comments with you um, down there. So. Yeah. Uh, ben Grimm is saying the title did not lie. I'll give you that. Yeah, they had to follow movie. through on Drag Me to Hell. We actually <laughs> had to drag someone to yeah. hell. And honestly, that was a pretty satisfying ending. It, that's like, what I'm saying. I, I like it like, because the ending is not as rewarded. Ba as it's bad as I felt for, for her and everything like that, movie? yeah, as bad as I felt for her, it was like, it was really good. And, and um, oh, God, what was his name? What? Justin Long. Justin Long. He was great. For his, what, he's what, what great in almost everything. Yeah, what, what little bit we had in him, like, he, he's, he was great. I liked him. Huh. Agreed. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Uncle right. Mercer says go to bed, Kaylee. <laughs> <laughs> we should have known with the all cows. <laughs> I'm with Ben Grimm. I love Dragon Ball. So, uh, speaking of news with booze, <coughs> I am 10 years sober yesterday. Congratulations, Doctor Death. Oh. Yeah, I might. Well, I don't. I won't. I'll be. I'll be drinking sober for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I might still. This guy's been doing good. Something else. Yeah. Everyone, I, everyone give him I a round of applause. I only drank once since last Sunday when we got together to film, yeah. and it didn't. It didn't. I mean, I only had four shots, and it fucked up my night for sleeping. So, mm. I just don't. I don't think I can drink much anymore. It's the opposite all, with me. Honestly. When I drink, it puts me out. It puts. It makes oh, me dude, sleepy. Oh, dude, not me. Oh no, uh, it fucks with my mind. Dude, even if I go to bed drunk, drunk, I'm still waking up like at least three times a night. Oh yeah, I wake. If, I, if, I, I, if like, I go to bed, drunk, that's me on sober night. Dude, I, dude, I, I wake sleep, up an I hour like later garbage, and then I'm fucked. Yeah, I'm, I'm a restless fucking sleeper. The yeah. only thing is, uh, is uh, yeah, Mary, Mary Jane is what'll help me sleep like yeah. the whole a night bit through. And everything. Yeah, yeah. Ali, thank too. goodness it's legal here. here Ali, here. seven months sober. Hell yeah, dude. Nice, good job. Yeah, Ali. yeah. I haven't had a sip since uh, I came down with COVID. So, do you want to call him Sweetie again before we go? Good job, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> was sweetie, it was something less. Than uh, I said, was. dear. Dear, sorry. Yeah, because I read it as Allie and everything. <laughs> that's right. We switched dear to dude. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you said my dear. And my yeah, dear. and I went my, my dude. dude. My dude. Right, dude. Right. <laughs> sorry, I had to revisit it. Uh, I'm in the same boat as Cecil. Booze fucks up my sleep more than it already is. Yeah, dude. Like I, it, and it didn't used to be that way. But when I actually stopped drinking like five nights a week. And only try to do it once a week, it fucked with my sleep even worse. So now I'm just like, I just need to not. Because your body is so used to having it in the system. Yeah, it's it. So I think I need to recalibrate my whole mm -hmm. system. Yeah. I need to go like a month or two at least without drinking at all. Yeah. And then if I drink one night and it does it again, then I'm then I know. You know then I know it's not for me. Wall. Yeah. 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 So. I just got to do some stuff, so we, we might not have, uh, if we have a news with booze, we'll have to have uh, Robert in here with us to make sure that we do it. And I was going to say, we have that hilarious intro video. I know, I know, we yeah. used it like five times. And then... <laughs> We could just. We should just. <laughs> I'll just record. I'll just record without, and I'll yeah. just put news without booze. <laughs> news without booze. <laughs> just slap. No, just. And I'll just put little arrows. These uh, are non-alcoholic no, drinks. Just superimpose <laughs> O'Douls over booze. Yeah. News with O'Douls. No, news with O'Douls. No. Uh, ben, ben, so no. ben Ben Grimm is funny. <laughs> My liver has emotional damage. Emotional damage. Yeah, yeah sure. that's how I feel with Jaeger. <laughs> that's Jack Daniels for me, man. Ugh. All right, guys. So I think that's Ready. where we're going to call it. Thank you all very much for joining us Hell yeah. for the news with booze this week. Thank you to everyone that was in the chat. Uh, we greatly appreciate all of you guys. We will be back uh, next huh. Sunday, I believe, is the plan to do the January review roundup. Because we wanted Marsha. She was unavailable this week. So you get uh -huh. news. The, the following uh, Sunday is meant to be the next episode of Elevator Pitch. 
Um, and I'm supposed to be going up against Chauncey oh, yeah. Robinson. Fuck so yeah, Chauncey's um, a shit. Hopefully, hopefully that can come together. Um, she's a she's a busy woman. Very so, much so. Uh, we're we're gonna try and put that together. And then the following Sunday is currently planned to be session zero of the horror Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Oh, he mentioned that at practice. Yes. Yesterday. So Fuego's uh, bandmate and and close friend of the show Mahalo has gone to the effort of creating an entire horror-themed Dungeons & Dragons experience. It's not D&D. He's made his own game that follows the rules of D&D, but it's a horror game. Yeah. For, so he, we have Session Zero where we're going to create our characters, or he's got characters we can choose. Yep. And, or. and so hopefully Marsha can be here, hopefully Andrew can be here, hopefully all of us can be here, because that will be a regular monthly, if possible, event where we will all gather to continue to tell the story um there's some production that i want to try and get better in order to present it but who knows maybe the first campaign we just do us around a table and so and it's not going to be live or is it going to be live i would like to do session zero we can do live because we're not gonna i don't have to set up gameplay and stuff like that uh, okay, beyond yeah. that it might not be presented live depending on how much uh, editing and effort I'm, I'm planning to put into it. So. Post, yeah. uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I think Session Zero will be fun. So that's what the Sundays look like for the rest of the month. Uh, we are also going to be reviewing this month. Uh, this coming Friday will be our BAM unboxing and uh, special unboxing that Robert joined. The next week we have a review of The Cursed, uh, the werewolf movie <coughs> that we previewed. Um, Texas Chainsaw will be is, that week. And the that? new Uncharted movie is next week. Huh. That was that one. That was the werewolf the one that you watched, Eight for Silver. Oh, I know, yeah. but it's different now. Yeah, said they filmed all the. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, Patrick is going to send us all links. That's why oh, I got cool. your email. Yeah, oh, okay. so he's going to so send remember, us all links because it is going to be theatrical. I saw it released. at Sundance last yeah, year. I remember you and, and I, said, you and I talked about that because I had sent you uh, yeah. something uh, like an article talking about it, and you were telling me briefly, uh, like briefly about what, what was going on. With I, it. I liked it, but I didn't love it. Yeah. But from what I read, they went and they did a bunch of reshoots yeah, and, and additional photography. A lot more practical was implemented in the film. See, so and I'm, it was I'm a movie that had that. potential, but I just didn't love it. So maybe. They got major yeah, improvement. Yeah, clearly really they got they got some more steam behind them. Was able to get some more funding, and yeah, yeah. I'm I'm all about it. Give me give me a good good solid werewolf movie with a great story. We haven't had yeah. those in a long time. And also a big exciting thing: the new Stephen King book comes out February fifteenth. It's called Gwendy's Final Task, and huh. that Tuesday, February fifteenth, will be. It's not going to be live. It's going to be pre recorded, but. Yeah, the review of the new Stephen King book. Hell yeah. Very excited about that. Just yeah, keep an eye out for that, guys. Dr. Dad said, full-time single fatherhood changed everything. No more booze when I got custody. Hey, that's, hey, that's yeah, man. awesome. Hell yeah, yeah. You chose wisely. Manning up. And honestly, that's that's what's constantly on my mind when I have those nights after I drink is, you know. This I, is real I, talk I, now, yeah, guys. I don't, mm -hmm. want, I don't want anything like this to be an example of any kind for my son or anything like mm -hmm. that, so. Yeah, that definitely does change things. Prioritize. So, um, uh, hey guys, have you, uh, Cecil, have you read Heroes in Crisis by any chance? I intend to buy it. Heroes in Crisis. Hmm. Was that the, the comic that was just out not long ago? Let me see. Oh, I like what Dr. Death did there. Man, news, news with booze. 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 Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good rebrand, honestly. Yeah, let's, oh, yeah, let's I did screen read capture that. that right now. We'll so leave. Heroes in Crisis was okay. It wasn't great. I got to be honest. I was a little let down by it. Hmm. Um, it was a follow-up to a different event, and it was it, it's basically all about uh, Wally West, The Flash, yeah. and what happens, because um, something happens, and you know, I don't want to ruin it for you. Thanks, Tom, Tom King is a great writer, but he's oh, written he way better Batman stuff. stuff yeah. Right? yeah, He's written way better stuff. I'm actually excited to finish his Superwoman, uh, Woman of Tomorrow, or yeah, Superwoman... Of tomorrow or something like that it's an eight issue series the eighth issue comes out in like two weeks and i haven't read it yet but it's tom king's big thing and then he's also going back and doing a six issue batman series coming up soon um after he finishes the batman catwoman series which has also been amazing so hmm. he's a great writer but yeah heroes in crisis was not unfortunately a good one hmm. um all right yeah don't no dr death i'm i, I trademark us via dr death uh, <laughs> so Anyway, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time. Oh, thank you to all of our patrons. Damn reason. We greatly appreciate you guys. Um, again, like Fuego said <laughs> earlier, we recorded a bunch of new Patreon material today, so that'll be doled out. We've dropped three uh, Patreon reviews since last Sunday. 
Uh, so there we're definitely active over there and um, thank you guys very much for supporting the channel the way that you do if you want to become a patron the link is in the description box down below and you can actually tell us movies that you want us to review or commentary commentate over and stuff like that and yeah thank you guys very much until next time I've been Cecil Laird Robert Wolfman Gracias I mean Fuego and remember stay, stay scared, scared. Mm.